Hi, my name is Megan, and this is a Naughty Mess Knitting Podcast. This is a special episode. I am doing a everything I made in 2023 recap. I am hoping this is not too long, <laughs> uh, but I have made a lot of objects. Let's start with a quick intro. I know uh, everything I made videos bring a lot of new people to um, podcasts. That's what I. That's where I find people sometimes. So, a quick intro to me. I'm Megan. I live uh, just north of Seattle in the Pacific Northwest. I have been living here for about eleven years. Um, I moved from the East Coast. I am married. I have a beautiful fourteen-month-old daughter. Um, which my husband and I adopted and she is amazing and hilarious. Uh, she's in a very funny phase right now. Uh, I talk about her sometimes on the podcast and yeah, her name is Theo. Uh, my mom, Cindy, she lives with us and, um, when she retired, she, uh, graciously decided to become our full-time live-in grandma nanny <laughs> and it's the greatest. Um, we have a dog named Winter who will be featured on this podcast a lot because her hair is on everything. Uh, she's a large breed mutt of some sort and she's beautiful. We love her. Okay. That's a lot of things about me. I knit. I do crochet. There are a couple of crochet projects here um, and one that I cannot find. Maybe I will find it <laughs> before the end of the episode. I wander around my house a little and uh, yeah, I... I'm going to just go through everything I made. This includes a couple of stuffies, some baby things, some hats, and my year of socks. I did um, Farmer's Daughter Fibers year of socks. So what I'm planning to do, just so everybody is aware of the game plan, I am going to uh, go through everything I made in chronological finish order. So not necessarily a start order, right? Um, I'll tell you what it is, the pattern name, the designer, um, the yarn, if I wrote it down, I didn't start podcasting until August. So I wasn't taking the super awesome notes before that. I think I can remember most of it. Um, and, um, the size, if I have that written down also, which is iffy, my start and end dates, uh, I'll also give you how long it took me to finish it. So you don't have to do the math. Um, and then I'm gonna cover a couple of quick questions for everything. There's some that I, I might skip it for like the hats and stuff, but would I make it again? Um, and would I use the yarn again? Um, and then any like lessons learned. Some of the yarn again too is gonna be silly, silly for you guys. But um, yeah, any special techniques, lessons learned, unique features. So I'm not gonna talk in depth about every pattern, but I will give you a high level overview. Um, for those patterns I don't have here, which I do have a lot of gifted items and some samples this year, I will just flash a picture up that I took. Again, not all of my pictures were great because some of my samples I didn't like post on the gram or anything. You can find me on Instagram at also a underscore naughty underscore mess and on Ravelry at a dash naughty dash mess. Uh, my projects are on there. If you have questions about anything, I'm going to put links to all of the patterns Gravelry or Etsy, depending on where they live. Um, so you can check them out yourself. If you want to see any of my notes, which were not plentiful in the beginning of the year, but some of them I'll point out that I did take notes um, in Ravelry, you can find those there. So I want to get started with a couple of stats. Um, I'm going to show you guys just, I'll flash, maybe I'll flash it on the screen with a screenshot too. But uh, what I'm looking at is I have all of my projects and I said I would talk about this and I will actually talk about more in depth in the, this week's actual episode. Uh, but my stash tracker, I have a project tracker and I just made a wear tracker because I think that's important data too, to inform my knitting decisions. So here is my little, um, my little data. <laughs> I love data. Uh, so I am an operations manager. I do a lot of data things in my life. And so I love a good chart. So this is um, telling me I completed 71 items this year. I uh, will give you the quick breakdown of category. So I categorize the way that I want to, and I will tell you what those things are. So I made 18 pairs of socks. I made 16 pullovers, which is full length, uh, full sleeve pullovers. 
Uh, I made 14 hats. I made seven teas and tanks. I made four scarves slash cows, scarves slash cows. Um, I think they were all cows actually. Uh, I made three cardigans, two, nope, three stuffies. I don't know what the third one is. Oh, I do. Three stuffies, three baby blankets, two shawls, and uh, one decor item. Uh, that is kind of correct. I think there's actually more than one decor item, but uh, only one that only got categorized as a decor item. <laughs> um, I made, this is my project list for the year. So even though we're gonna hear about this in a second, I will say just my most uh, actively finishing um, months, are yeah so i completed nine projects in april eight in september and eight in january um the rest of the months were six seven whatever august i only completed three um and i will say i was pretty burnt out from a july that only had six completed objects but big ones and they were mostly samples um I went through some of these stats, stats last week, but I do categorize what type of thing they are. So I did 20 tests, but I made also five tests that were gifts. So it's in a separate category, but so it's 25 tests. Um, five of those ended up being gifts. I did seven, uh, eight make-alongs, one of which was a gift. I made nine samples and I made 13 things that were just gifts. I also made three promo items and I just put this in its own category and I'll talk about those when we get to it, but they were from Hobby. So um, something I have never talked about on the podcast, but something I did just once and it was a good experience and also I won't do it again. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see. I am going to pull up um, the list. Let's hit it. Okay. I completed my first project of the year. It was something I started in December of last year and then I finished right at the beginning of the year. So I started this December 1st, 2022 and I finished it January 5th, 2023, um, which took me 35 days. It is called, it's a stuffy. Um, what did I categorize this one as? A stuffy. So this one is actually a home decor item too, but this is Oatmeal the Snowman. Um, that's also the pattern name, just Oatmeal the Snowman, but he, that's a good fitting name for him. Um, um, I'll take his little scarfie off so you can see. This is just knit, I think, top down. I'm not entirely sure. Um, it was a pattern I bought many years ago and I, cause I thought he was so cute and I actually thought he was pretty small. <laughs> he is not. He has a nice large stuffy. Um, he has uh like pipe cleaners in his hands to make them kind of manipulatable uh I made him a little scarf he's got a nose I think that last thing like the reason he finished I finished him in January actually is because his nose wasn't made his scarf was like his accessories weren't made but he was there I wanted him as a decoration in the house because why not he's so cute um so he comes out at Christmas time and he hangs out in our um very rainy atmosphere so it makes me this is like the nicest snowman you'll see around these parts Okay, um, this is made with, uh, Woolies Thick and Quick. Um, it's a yarn I've used hundreds of times and I will forever praise Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick. It's a great yarn. It's super awesome for like a super bulky that's not, um, you know, that's, it's 80% acrylic, 20% wool and just is great. It's a workhorse yarn, um, and the stitch definition is nice. Uh, I have tons of it in my stash. And so I just used something I had. Um, I don't have that much anymore because I don't really buy it anymore. But it's something that I love to make like really quick baby blankets with and just like other, you know, easy projects. I, uh, I would absolutely encourage people to make this pattern. And I don't know that I'd make it again just because I don't know that I need two oatmeal to snowmen. Unless somebody else wanted one, then it went pretty quickly. The pattern, um, the cable repeat was like easy to do and enjoyable. And if he, um, he's got like a little, uh, moss stitch side. So it's like cable, then pearls and moss stitch. So it's got a little bit of interest. 
very very fun um the rest of it wasn't too fiddly and yeah I enjoyed it so that is oatmeal the snowman the second project I completed was a blanket and this was gifted. It's a baby blanket. And so I will put a picture up here. Um, you guys are kind of getting the look at what my year really looked like or my years of knitting before this really looked like. It was just like random projects, home decor. The last couple of years, like a few sweaters. Um, you'll see where it gears up. <laughs> it is kind of fun. <laughs> um, okay, so I started this on January 1st and I finished it on January 7th. This was not a surprise baby. So I just waited until the very last minute. This blanket was delivered to the parents so that took me six days but we got the dad-to-be to pick it up on January 10th and their baby was born on January 10th so I think he came by in the morning because he wanted to like do a visit because we had just brought Theo home not that long before and he hadn't seen her yet and you know but his wife was at home because she wasn't feeling great she was like getting ready to go into labor <laughs> So, um, this is for baby Denny. So baby Denny has her blanket and, um, I, I used the, uh, Mos it's just called mosaic blanket. Um, it's a free pattern by Pearl Soho and I love this pattern. I've made it more than once. I would definitely make it again. This is the first time I did like a color change in it. Mostly cause I don't think I just like had enough yarn in any of the colors, but also because the person, the family we made it for are big. UW Husky fans. So is my husband. It's one of his childhood friends. And I mean, like the dad is, he's obsessed <laughs> and, uh, it's very fun. I am like total supporter of some school gear. So I wanted to make sure I had purple, gold and white in there. Um, and so that's the mosaic blanket. It's a great knit. It's a super awesome pattern. It's easy. Um, if you've never done a mosaic knit before, it's just doing it flat is a great way to learn how to do like what is happening how does it work the pattern is easy to understand it's the pattern repeat is very easy you can see I made like one little mistake in there and it's like I missed two lines it still made a diamond it just wasn't as big as the other ones she's a baby what does she care um and I used for that I think I used mostly big twist. It was just like acrylic I had in my stash. So big twist, maybe some pound of love or something. Um, so just hundred percent acrylic. Okay. The next project I made, um, which you guys cannot see this like little chaos stand I have over here. Um, but hopefully nothing topples over in the middle of this. Um, these are actually the only pair of socks I didn't wash before this. So I could like give you guys a non all of winter's hair, um, view, but that's because these, my mom still wears them pretty constantly. And I made these for her before she moved in with us. But, um, when she would come over and help us like for a day with the baby, um, or just to spend some time with her, she would put these on. I gave these to her, um, right after I made them. Cause they were just a little bit big for me. And she started wearing them over her socks, like, so as slippers in the house. So there's just a plethora of dog hair, but, um, I did this as a test knit. So this was a test knit for, um, wool and pine designs. Um, and I tested this one. I will have notes on. So, um, I tested the size four. Uh, I'm not sure how many stitches that is because this is a worsted weight sock. So 60 something or whatever. I definitely could have gone down a size for me. I also made them a little bit long. I had not been making tons of socks before this. So it was like, either my first worsted weight sock and I just had no idea how it would react. Um, and so here they are. Uh, I'm gonna, for all the socks, just because I feel like it's easier to see the pattern and et, et cetera, I'm gonna flash a picture up of them being worn. Um, I did take a picture for the test knit, and so I can put that picture up here. Um, they have these little, I wish I had my eye cord maker when I did this, they have these little pom-pom eye -pom cord business that you just kind of like thread through, and there is a little, I just pull them through one of the um, ribbings. And you can tie them like this one is tied. Um, yeah, they are just cute little cozy. Um, you can see the pattern better if I do this. 
they have sort of like X's and O's. I think this pattern came out like early February and they had a knit along right up until Valentine's Day um, for like two weeks that you had to make like one sock and you could, they were some prizes or something. Um, and yeah, so this is my, sorry, these are called the hearth home socks. I actually don't know if I said that. Um, so these are the hearth home socks by Woolen Pine Designs. It's cute. Uh, the yarn I used was Plymouth Galway and I had never used it before. It's like a hundred percent wool. I shall tell you. Um, yeah. And it is a worsted weight. It's a super nice durable yarn. It's not super soft. I don't know that I would use it for a garment, but I would totally use it again for something that was like outerwear or like just a bit thicker like that you would wear a t-shirt under and I think you'd get, you'd be fine I also think like we I've washed them once or twice and they have softened up a little bit so that's also nice so that is the hearth home socks um would I make them again that's a great question I did so you'll see them in a second <laughs> um and yeah let's see any unique features for that so um you know, just a worsted weight sock. I think that was kind of a learning, a learning moment. Um, otherwise, yeah, they're pretty basic. It's a pretty basic sock. Uh, but yeah, very slipper like. Would I make many worsted weight socks? No, probably not. That's not really my jam. I'd rather just have like a true slipper. Um, we have a lot of hardwoods in our house. So like just a bunch of worsted weight socks. This is very slippery. Uh, let's see. I now have... Um, and so those I, guys, I'm already getting out of order here. Those I started on January 1st for the test knit and I completed them on the 8th. So it took me seven days. Um, yes. And that's all I have to say about that. This, this next project is, um, this project number four, um, man, I'm not gonna be able to keep track of that once we get to the higher ones. So I'll just maybe flash it with the number when I'm doing the the text here. Um, but this is another picture, just pictured one. This is another baby blanket for a different friend. Um, and it is the super easy crib blanket from, you guessed it, Pearl Soho. I think they have the greatest selection of free patterns for baby blankets. They're generally understated. Um, they do have like fun plays on color you can use. I've probably made like six or 10, six to 10 at least six, gotta be more than that, closer to 10 baby blankets, all different patterns, um, and some repeats, like I've made this more than once, actually, the first time I made this for a baby blanket was for the same friend's first kid, so her second kid, um, they were both, uh, gender surprised babies, which is so fun, but also, like, I just picked a theme, so the first baby blanket was, like, pumpkin spice latte colors, <laughs> I'm not kidding, it was, like, a little bit of orange, it was very fall and very beautiful, and she was, her, this baby was born in, October in October. Um, this, uh, second baby, she was born in February. And so I wanted to get it done before her, um, sprinkle. They didn't do a big shower. They did a sprinkle. Um, but I also did not attend because we still had teeny tiny baby who had, you know, possible respiratory. We just had to be careful with her for her first five or six months. So, uh, I didn't go, but I did give this to uh, the person hosting the party so she could have it. Um, I made along with this hat, which I'll talk about in a second, but this blanket I made started in January 1st. I finished it January 9th. So it took me eight days. It is a garter ribbed. Just go until you like pretty much finish the yarn or you're only going to have enough to, you know, go to the end of the row or make your rows even or stripes even do whatever you want. Right. Um, also made with Lion Brand, Woolies, Thick and Quick greatest workhorse yarn. Um, it's a super squishy blanket and that's a, it's a really great way to get like a fun, affordable palette. Cause it, the stripes I think are a good size. It's really good for a crib blanket. You don't have to like just, I got one skein of six colors or something like that. So, um, it was very fun picture. Um, and I've made this more than once. I would definitely make it again. Easiest baby blanket you'll ever get. And people love it because like if you do a good job with the palette, like it's pretty fun. You could do a fade. You can just, you know, do a thematic thing. This is kind of like Hudson Bay colors, sort of. Um, so, uh, the next thing I finished was another test knit. 
This one I have to hunt for. Okay. So this was um, another test, lit, test knit for Wool and Pine Designs. Uh, I tested the baby size of the deep winter hat. Um, I started this January 13th. I finished it January 14th. So it took me a day. Um, I put this as a gift knit too. So I think we've, we've talked about this. So this is another test and gift. This one, I knew I was going to gift it. Um, and it is a really cute little, like, I think I did the of course I just put baby as the size, but I would have made something like under the one year size or if one year is the smallest, I would have made that size. Um, this fit her, it still fits on her head. Actually. It's got a lot of stretch. Um, it, I think right after I finished this, cause I was like one of the first testers to finish it. I gave the note that it was kind of tall, like taller than expected with the pattern. So I think they actually changed the decreases just a little bit. So, um, but it fit her for a long time cause there was just so much <laughs> space in there. Um, it does have a folded brim. I made this with Cloudborn fibers. Um, super wash merino in, a, in the merino twist. It's a worsted weight or DK weight yarn, heavy DK. Um, I think it's worsted. It is, a, it's a great yarn. It's also like, it's, I think it's a hundred percent super wash merino. It's what you'd expect. It's super soft. The color is really nice. Um, yeah. And I wanted to test from stash. That was uh, just like in the back of my mind. Um, goal for last year and I mostly accomplished that. So this one was also just from stash. Uh, what, what do I have to say about it? Would I make it again? I would make the adult size. Um, my kid hates hats. So like <laughs> maybe I would make the, you know, a kid size for her, a slightly bigger one, but yeah, it's, it's a fun pattern. It's the cables are like a little bit interesting. Um, the adult size has more going on in the pattern because it's a lot bigger of a canvas to do this. Uh, so yeah, you should check that out. Uh, would I use the yarn again? Yeah, like obviously it's a great, super easy, super wash merino yarn. Um, they have some really nice colors. You can get it on like yarn.com or sometimes at your local yarn store. So what's next? Oh, this next one I can't find. So I thought that I had this in my house, but I must have gifted it to somebody. That happens. Um, Sometimes people come over. I'm just like, do you want a hat? Can you take a hat, please? <laughs> uh, so this is the Crystal Trellis Beanie. Um, the pattern is by um, Rosie Posey Knit Co. I did this as a test knit. It also, at the same time, we were testing the Crystal Trellis Cal, which we'll talk about later. Um, and... What do I have to say about it? it? I started it January 12th. I finished it January 15th. So it took me three days. Um, it's not super complicated color work. There are some floats that you do have to catch though, which makes it like not my very favorite thing. Like I love motifs where you don't have to catch any floats. Um, you probably could get away with it because it's a hat, you know, like you're just sticking on your head. So, um, and your, your head is bigger than one inch. So it's likely you could get away with a little bit longer of floats. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, I enjoyed the process. It was my first time um, testing for her and she was super nice and responsive. It was like many of the, especially for accessories, I feel like those really do just happen. The tests happen on Instagram. It was fine. Not a big deal. Um, not my favorite way to test, but also for something simple like that, it was pretty easy. Uh, so I would make it again. I did. I did. I made it again. Um, as a sample, but, uh, I, yeah, I would recommend the pattern was it's pretty, it's like snowflakes. Um, and the yarn. Oh, I used, this was the first, I think this was my first ever project in back loop yarn co yarn. So I found Aaron's D stash page on Instagram, like while baby was in hospital. So it was like right around Thanksgiving last year and she was having a sale and I bought some yarn from her, not even knowing that the back loop yarn was her own yarn. She was just getting rid of like old, old, um, like inventory and used this. And I was like, Oh, isn't this so great? And then when I went to tag the dyer on Instagram on my picture, I realized it's the same person. I was like, wow. <laughs> That definitely eluded me. Um, 
I just thought this person really loved Back Lube Yarn Co., but was getting rid of it. I mean, I have no idea. Uh, so uh, I loved it. It was, I mean, obviously, I'm a big, big Back Lube Yarn Co. fan. So uh, yeah, that is what happened. Okay, let's see here. Next project is the Bells Beanie. This also is a test and gift. So um, uh, this is by Naughty Gang. Um, her name is Ava. I've been following her on Instagram for a long time. Um, it is just a really simple color work. You can see it on here. Um, hat in baby to adult sizes. It's also made with you guessed it because it doesn't look just like the blanket. I think it's even sitting on the blanket in the picture. Uh, that the line brand Wooly is thick and quick. That is left over from that baby blanket. And I was like, hey, I'm just going to make this for a newborn size and gift it. Um, worked out great. Super cute. Really fun color combos you can have. There were some people that did this test with like sports colors and that made like a lot of sense. Just like the way the motif is. Um, I started at January 16th and finished at January 16th because it's a baby hat out of super bulky. So, uh, yeah, I just was like, I'm going to tear through this. Um, okay. I, um, have one more pattern from January, but that is my January sock. So I'm going to put those to the side and, um, it was a test knit. So we'll talk about like what the patterns were, but I'm going to do all of those socks just at once because, that's how I want to do it. So let's move on to February. Um, on February 10th, I finished a knit. So it was kind of a bigger gap between project finishes towards the end of the month, but I finished this beautiful test knit. Um, this is a test called Keep It Cozy. It's the Keep It Cozy Beanie. Um, it was a, it's actually pretty fun. Um, it was a really fun repeat. I think it was like a four stitch repeat. I won't give too much away, but these sort of leaning stitches are not made how you would expect. Um, so it was pretty, it was like a, it was a new technique for me. It was an interesting, it has a really, you know, it's a great way to show off like not a full special skein. This is made out of Malabrigo Rasta. Obviously I'd use Rasta again. So don't ask me that question. I have so much of it here. Um, for these kind of super squishy big beanies, they're, it's so comfy. Here's what it looks like on, so you can see. It's fun. The fit is nice and close. I have a huge head, so <laughs> keep in mind, this could be a little bit slouchy on other people, but I have a gigantic head. Um, and I do uh, removable um, pom-poms on them, so you can you can like soak a wash the hat if you need to. But yeah, it's I think that I made this in like the ivory color and maybe quagwe. I know way too, I, I could identify like every Rasta color. Uh, but yeah, it's super enjoyable. So sorry, that was a pattern by uh, Keep uh, Kate Houdon. Um, I'm not sure what her handle is, but um, I'll, pu I'll put it uh, here with, um, I'll have put it here already. Uh, it So this, I started, did I say this? February 7th, completed it February 10th. So it took me three days. It was a test. I finished it early. These hats, I kind of just fly through. So that is that. Um, and I would totally make that pattern again. I have not because I just haven't really been motivated to make any more super bulky hats because I have like a big store of them here. Um, I would not wear that ivory color myself. Like I already have a hat that is that ivory color and I really would love to do it like dark with a light. That would be pretty fun too. Um, so if I ever did it for me, it'd probably be that. Um, okay. The next thing I finished was a garment that was a long time coming. So, um, what did I put as the start date? I started this October 1st, 2022, and I finished it February 10th, 2023, that was 132 days. It was also two days after my husband's birthday, which is when I told him I would definitely finish it by. <laughs> I did not. Um, but you guys have seen pictures of this before, and here it is in live action. This is the Weasley sweater. It's called Mrs. Weasley's Christmas. Mrs. Weasley's Home Knit Christmas Pullover Sweater sweater. It is from, um, the Tannis Gray book, the first one of the Harry Potter knits. Um, and 
it's I mean it's a really basic like it could have it doesn't have to be like a Weasley sweater right like it doesn't have an M it has a W because again my husband is a big Huskies fan and he wants to be able to wear something special to games and he's worn this to all the games he's gone to this year when we go out and watch a game he wears this people compliment him on it he loves to show it off and that makes me very happy I did make this out of um line brand Heartland it's a great it's a great acrylic yarn it's just acrylic um I think it has like it almost has like a heathery look to it. So it's like a little more interesting than just like a straight dyed yarn. It's, um, Heartland. Is that what I said? Heartland. I think it's got like a lot of like national park names and stuff like that. Anyway, this uh, color is called Hot Springs. And then it's just some random yellow, actually wool is the W for my stash that's duplicate stitched. Um, would I make this again? Absolutely not. Not because the pattern was like horrible or anything, but this was my first pieced sweater and like never again, guys, I'm not interested. It'd have to be the most beautiful sweater that ever, ever existed and had to be pieced for a certain reason. I just like didn't like, it. I will say I heard from Shreya's podcast the other day that the gallon sweater or a cardigan, which is pieced and sewn together is going to come out in a heavier weight and I really want to make it. So like I maybe will take this back, but like for somebody else, a pieced sweater is crazy. Um, anyway, here it is in all its glory. It gets a ton of wear. This yarn is super great. It has not pilled a ton consider like he, he literally wears this. I mean, not like every day or anything, but he's worn it for a lot of the Husky games this year. And so like 10 times at least, and it's done great, like out in public while he's being, you know, drunk and cheering. I don't really know. Anyway, um, that's the Weasley sweater. Okay. Uh, let's see. And I made him a size medium, um, in case you're interested. Okay, so here is my second pair of Hearth Home socks. I started these on February 8th. I finished them on February 14th. I was part of that make along with um, wool and pine. This is a wool and pine pattern as a reminder. I did not do the palm or the like the pom pom and um, I cord for these because I made a size smaller. So I made a three for these. I used also Backloop Yarn Co. yarn on this. Um, this blue is the same as from the hat. Um, I was just using the extra and then, uh, I thought like, cause it was a sort of XOXO pattern that I would use a pink. I, they fit, they're okay. They're maybe like, I think I might've adjusted my needle size too. So like <laughs> maybe overcompensated. They're a little bit tight. Like, I mean, I can wear them around the house just fine. They're very slippery. This is a super wash wool. It's not just a wool which is what the Galways were just wool. I don't know. Um, I just need to get like maybe some sock slip and put, put X's and O's on it. I would never wear these in shoes. So I could totally do that. Um, I've worn them a couple of times, just like on the couch. And then I take them off to walk around the house. So I don't like fall over. Um, yeah. So I did make it twice. Twice is nice. Let's see. I, uh, I told you the dates on that. So that is, yeah, six days. Also, I was finishing that sweater. So like I needed, you know, I had to like work on them pretty hard that last weekend. Okay, I next did another test knit, um, which was a test and gift because this is a baby hat again. Um, I started it February 15th. I finished it February 16th. It was not only because it's small and a baby hat, but it was really addicting to me because it was so fun and I couldn't wait to see what it looked like. Um, so one day to complete, and this is called the Cupcakes and Sprinkles Hat by um, Elaine Hemingway, who is like, let me see, The Bashful Lamb. Yeah, so The Bashful Lamb. And um, also this is made in Rasta. This is the blueberries and cream colorway. And then this one is natural at the top. It's got a cute little pom-pom on it. Um, and I think I made like the six month size and this was too big for Theo to wear for a little while. Like it's pretty tall. I think she also adjusted the pattern. Like I was one of the first testers to finish. And so I think she adjusted the pattern just like a little bit shorter for the baby baby size. 
I would absolutely make this for her again when she's a little bit bigger. I did already make this pattern another time this year um, as another gift and I would make it again for Theo if she wanted it when she's a little bit older and will appreciate hats because right now <laughs> zero appreciation off her head immediately. Um, but it's got this was another thing I had never done before for the ribbing, but it's got like a slip stitch rib. It actually sits so nice in this super bulky yarn. I don't think it would work for everything, but it's like really, really cute here. It does make it look very different than, you know, the icing part of the cupcake. Uh, it was a Pico um, sort of uh, middle divider section, right? And so like there was a couple of things that were unique and different for this and I loved it. I really loved making it. It was it was an easy and fun pattern um, and I just could not wait to see what it looked like and it's just as cute as I imagined. Um, the next knit on my needles was also another one of these, which I will post a picture up here. I think I even have, even have a picture of them next to each other. Um, and this one I started on February 21st and I finished it on February 22nd um, because Mike had a friend coming into town and their daughter, I love making her stuff. She always appreciates it. She's three. She's super funny. Um, this is not long before her birthday. Her birthday is in the beginning of April. And so um, I wasn't sure if we would see them again. They live out on the peninsula. So I wanted to make sure she had a new hat. When she got home, her mom called it an ice cream hat. And she was like, mom, it's a cupcake. Duh. <laughs> I love her. She's the cutest child. Um, okay. So, and that was, again, one day to create because they're so easy. I made her, of course, did not take a note. I think like the two to three year old size or something like that, the three to four. Um, her mom said she had kind of a big head. So I wanted to make sure it would actually fit her for that rest of that winter. Uh, okay. Here's something you guys have not seen before that is a garment. It's my first garment for me finished in 2023. This one is so hard to hold up because it's just so big. Um, I don't have any pictures of this. What I'm going to do for garments is generally speaking, I'm not going to put them on. I'm just going to pop a picture of me wearing it. If I have a good picture of me wearing it. Um, otherwise we can just talk about it. I think I have good pictures from all these cause they were either test knits or I've been posting them on my grid. So, um, this one I haven't, and I will tell you about it in just a second, but this is a very big sweater. It's a cocoon wrap. So, um, if you guys are familiar with the Andrea Mowry big cozy Cardi pattern, it's the same shape as that. So you stick it on. Um, it's, really warm. I did wear this like an absolute ton, uh, over like last, the end of last winter. Um, I'll give you details on the other things in a sec, but let me just show you. So uh, yeah, it's really hard to see. Um, so it's, you know, it's like this, it's got little baby T-Rex arms attached to it. And it's mostly just like for like in your house, coziness, like definitely trendy people can wear these outside, but like I look like I just got out of the bath and should be like wrapped up in this and with a, a mug of tea, right? Like I just feel like that's the vibe. Um, it is made out of Burnett Pip Squeak, which is a polyester yarn. Um, really imitates boucle. It's softer than boucle because it's just, you know, it's polyester, you know, that material feels like. Um, it is the recommended yarn for the test knit that we did. And I did buy yarn for this one, but it was really cheap. So I was like, okay. Um, they don't have tons of colors. Would I recommend the yarn again? Knitting with boucle is hard and boucle imitation boucle. It's hard. Like it's really hard to see your stitches. Um, for the sake of this pattern, it's so warm and cozy. It is like being wrapped up in a big hug. I don't like their colors. Like I don't love this brown. I I would not buy it again. I didn't like their like their off white color either. Um, and they only have like baby pink and like another darker brown. Like it's fine. Um, the detail on this, which you can see in the picture I'll post, has like the back has like these cute little like lace work, which you can actually see on this. So would I recommend the yarn? Like. I mean, probably not. Like I wouldn't use it again for this or really anything. Um, but I like the boucle alternative better. Like if I'm going to do that, but it's a really great affordable option. Or if you have any allergies to wool and you want the similar look to a boucle, um, yeah, do it. And it's way cheap. I mean, it's super cheap, but it is also, you know, a plastic, uh, 
I hope people have thoughts and feelings about that, but you know, um, to each their own. Uh, okay. Sorry. I'm, I'm not done talking about that one. I started that January 28th and I finished it February 25th. It was a testnet that was due in March. Um, it's a, so it took me 28 days to complete. Um, it was not that long. It's just like, I took a rest to finish my sweater and like do some other stuff. And, um, I was still like, we're newly in the baby phase, you know, like she was three or four months at this point, not sleeping, you know, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, this pattern is by Sarah Mingle, who is Overstar Knits on Instagram. She, uh, so it's called the Goldie Cocoon and it is a pattern that was like based on her mom, her grandma, her grandma, I think like that was like the inspiration. She decided not to publish this because by the time like things were going on in her life, she just like needed to take some time and she was going to put it out this fall. And honestly, she has not been active on Instagram. So I don't know what's going on there. I have not gotten any information since doing the test. Um, I tested for her before the Nell sweater, that um, brioche, full brioche sweater we talked about a little bit ago. That's also a Sarah Mingle pattern. I don't really know what's going on. Um, I haven't reached back out, but also she just hasn't been active on Instagram. So I don't want to bug her if she needs time. Um, I finished it. I kind of wanted to go out in the world. I think it was, it was a fun, um, little thing. Would I make it again? Like, I don't know. Like I actually want to make the big cozy Cardi, but that's mostly because I really like the Surrey collar and that texture. Um, this is like a bulky knit with that lace work. Like it would probably be really nice. And like, even in one of these, like the petite wool, it would be really nice. It would work up really nice in that. I don't need another one in my wardrobe. It's not something I gravitate to a lot, but I actually, I wore it a lot around the house, but like, I don't wear it out. And so like, you know, I have, I have that one. I have other ones. So the next one is my February socks, which I'm just going to put to the side right now. Then I did a couple samples. So I, we're, t we're now in the month of March. Um, I will put pictures up here. So I completed a crystal trellis cowl, uh, which is that same set pattern from Rosie Posey Knit Co., um, I started it February 25th and finished it March 1st, which was four days. I also finished a crystal trellis beanie from on, I started March 1st, right after I finished the cowl and I finished it March 30th. So that took me two days that time to complete. Um, and both of these were made out of yarn from, uh, three Irish girls yarn. Uh, I have a little bit of a story to tell you about this. I've never talked about it on the podcast. I'm not gonna expand on it a lot, but, uh, as every other sample I've done, I agreed to make a sample for a payment. I was sent the yarn. I made the pattern in time. Well ahead of time. I wasn't supposed to finish. I didn't need to finish. She didn't have a really hard deadline. She was hoping for before April. Um, I finished all of this and got this out to her mid-March. There's one other, which we'll talk about in a second because it's like two, two finished objects from now. Um, and then I gave her, it was payment via yarn and I gave her my yarn order and I have never heard back from her. I've talked to her a lot of times. I, I mean, like I've, I've emailed her tons of times. She was really active in emailing me back for the yarn order. She acknowledged it and everything through July. And then she just has not responded since I've posted on her Instagram. I've sent her messages, sent her emails. I asked Stephanie from Rosie Posey Knit Co. to reach out since that was like, she was the sponsoring yarn dyer for that test knit. And I was like, Hey, if you have a relationship, could you reach out? Um, I'm not the only person. There's other people who have not gotten their yarn. I didn't know about that before this. And like, apparently she was having a thing like a couple of years ago and then, yeah. So, um, a little shade because like I did a thing, I should have been paid for it. Um, it's a sweater quantity of yarn. It was a lot to not be paid and I'm pretty upset about it, but also, um, I've reached out. I'll continue to do so, but you know, I'm sort of, it's a, it's a risk, I guess, to be a sample knitter for that. It's never happened to me otherwise. And I will only work with people that I trust who are, you know, considerate on Instagram, who I see good things about them through others. So just, uh, you know, things to note. Okay. Uh, and the cowl, I mean, I put pictures of the cowl and the hat up. They, they're both fine, totally fine patterns. I think if you like color work, if you like that motif, they're super wintry and nice. Um, Okay, here is a sweater that I wore a few weeks ago. This is a test knit also for um, 
the petite knitter who not to be confused with petite knits very different knitters um and uh her name is Wei Chin. She lives in the Arctic Circle. So she's like way, way, way up north. Always makes these cozy, cozy knits. And so this one is called the Claire de Lune Jumper. It is a circular yoke, top down, all over color work sweater. It's worsted weight. So that like made it very approachable. It was my first all over color work sweater. I would do it again in a heartbeat. I would definitely pick different colors. It's so cozy though. Like it's such, such a cozy knit. Um, it, I still wear it. I especially wear it like in the house. Like it's, it's the warmest, like it's, you know, when you do color work, it's like two layers of yarn all the time. It's very, very warm and very lovely. Um, I used simply worsted, which is a uh, knit picks yarn. Um, it's a hundred percent wool in a couple of different colors. I got a sampler pack years ago, which is why it's three colors, um, to just use some of it that side is where my cut, you know, my, where my row changes are. Those still look good. Like you can see there's that little step down, but like it looks nice. Um, I learned a ton about like circular yoke construction. I think it might've been my first circular yoke constructed. I don't know if that's true, but I, it might've been, it was enjoyable. The fit is nice. You don't get any kind of like weird back bat wings type thing. Um, yeah, really pleased. I was also like, it was so nice that there are no you know, floats to catch in this whole sweater. Like you can see how lovely that inside is. It's gorgeous. Seriously. So nice. I did knit this inside out. I know I've talked about this before. It is my tip for consistent color work tensioning is I knit it with a Norwegian thimble inside out. So I, the thimble is just like keeps my colors from ever getting tangled in my fingers. The people that can just keep them in the right place or on two fingers, like kudos to you. I cannot get my hand to do that. <laughs> I'm a continental knitter and I just like, I, I've tried many times and I don't understand. I also really hate doing the, the two finger method. So I love the Norwegian thimble, but you can get a little bit of tensioning issues because they're just coming from the same hand and there's not much you can do to like separately tension them. So, uh, if you knit inside out, this is always going to be bigger, you know, like that's the biggest side. So it will make sure that you don't get any like weird puckering. Um, and you can see like where the increases are. I think you can see a little bit of like puckering in here. I also only did a steam block for this. So I think if I really soaked it, it would, uh, it would release a little bit more. Um, that I do have a couple more stats on. So I started that March 4th. I fib or I started that February 16th. I finished it March 4th and that's 16 days. So it was a super fast knit. I made a size five. Oh, the technique that I learned, not only just my first color work sweater, that was really fun, um, corrugated ribbing, that like two color ribbing, that was really fun. I'd never done it before. I wouldn't use it for everything, but it was a cool effect. Um, it's way tighter than regular ribbing and does not have the same kind of give because it's color work. Um, but it was really cool. It was, a, it was a super fun and interesting way to do, um, to do some ribbing. The next project is my last sample knit for um, three Irish girls. Uh, it is another Rosie Posey Knit Co., um, pattern. It's called the coffee date cowl. Here's a picture of it. It's gorgeous. It's a beautiful cowl. Um, I would totally knit this pattern again. It was really fun to make again. It was, I was like doing a lot of color work in these days and I really enjoy color work. It, um, knits up pretty quick. The motifs are all a little bit different. So that was like fun. Um, I liked the colors she sent me. They were really gorgeous. Like her yarn itself is pretty. Um, this is called Dubliner DK and it is like a really thin DK. It's a two ply. It's an interesting yarn. Um, and I, I really enjoyed knitting with it, but again, I'm not going to recommend that you buy anything from her because she, you may never get your order. Uh, the next project I also don't have here. Uh, this is, um, I don't have anything else. Like there's nothing I really learned from that last one other than be careful who you sample it for. I joined the make along for Malabrigo. I love Malabrigo. I think they're a really awesome company, um, from my experience and I haven't done like a ton of research about them or anything, but like I have used pretty much every type of yarn that they have, um, at this point. They have some new ones actually I have not used and I'd be interested. Uh, yeah, they're just like, They've got really great, fun colors. I like their tonals. They've come out with a lot more tonals. Um, anywho, 
this is a, it was a Makita, um, make along. So it's make along and a gift knit for me. I, I knew going into it, I didn't want to keep this thing. So it's a long scarf. It's called a, it's called the long journey shawl, right? I told you that. Um, the pattern is by Takako Takiguchi. Um, and she put together like a lot of information in the beginning of this like pattern, like why, why stitch patterns, etc. Um, it's a free pattern on Ravelry. It, is um it's one of the things i like about their make long it's always a free pattern uh you do have to use their yarn in order to be eligible for the prizes i did win prizes from this one it's my second one that i've done i did the one last uh, in 2022 as well um and that was my first like shawl thing and i really loved it i'll probably do it again this year because honestly if, as long as it's yarn i have on hand I'm not gonna buy anything new for a make along but um it yeah it's an interesting you can see it's a zigzag shape scarf I really loved, like, they were really fun kind of traveling cables and stuff, and they were really cute. Uh, Makita's a fingering weight yarn. It's a single ply. That made it a little bit less enjoyable. I liked the colors a lot. I made it for my aunt. Um, I knew she'd be coming this year for an Alaskan cruise and staying with us for a couple of days. I haven't made her something knit nice knit in a while, and so I wanted to gift her something while she was here. Um, it was just one size. Would I make it again? Probably not because I don't really have that much interest in that pattern. Would I use Makita again? Absolutely. I have a ton of it here, but I would use it with something else so that you don't have that kind of like just super pilly problem. That's all I have to say about that. Okay. Um, now, now we're into my hobby yarn thing. So if you guys don't know hobby, hobie, whatever, um, they are a Denmark craft company um, yarn store uh they're online i don't know if they have a storefront i don't think so but they are like super active on social media they have like a, a weekly bingo game which is just like them talking about their products a lot they've got some you know yarns that they make and they also sell like like navia and like some plymouth yarns like I don't, there's some other things i don't know um i have bought yarn from them many many times I've always had a really good experience. It ships pretty fast. Um, you can often get free shipping. They've got really aggressive pricing for like the acrylics and the cottons. Super great pricing. Their wool is like fair priced. It's cheaper, definitely cheaper. But like I think yarn.com has maybe even better prices for some of the wool. And it's like I'd rather support some more like American farms for things like that. But whatever, right? Um, great option for things. They, because I was like posting more on Instagram and whatever, I signed up to be like, they have like kind of an affiliate program where you can do these um, sort of like hobby challenges and they basically will, you can put in, a, in an application and then they'll either say yes or no to you. And I just thought, hey, what the heck, there's no risk here really to me. Um they basically give you as much yarn as you want to order. There wasn't like really a cap on it by any means. I mean, I didn't go crazy, uh, but they give you like certain parameters to do. Okay. All of that to say the next three projects are all projects that were my ho hobby yarns and I kind of did them all at once. So I got yarn a couple weeks before the challenge started, um, or like a week before. And then like I had to do an unboxing. So you have to like, you agree to do like two videos and two posts or something like that stories I don't know something like there's certain amount of social media things you're supposed to be doing using the hashtag it's on your profile is it verified or not I don't know if they'd like charge you it's not like they got any credit card information from me regardless it was an Easter challenge so it was supposed to be um like Easter home decor things so home decor or stuffies and so I kind of did a both of those um this is the honey bunny yarn which is sort of like Bernat blanket um, and this was the first one I finished. She's so cute. Let me see. <laughs> She's an egg, egg acorn. It's just like a little like Easter egg. That's a unicorn. I want to make a couple more of them because they're so fun. I don't want to make them in this yarn though, partly because just the pattern, it was very challenging. I wanted it to be like a close knit and I maybe just like did one size too small on the crochet hook. And the, the way that these yarns are, they just like, if you pull too tight, it's like a cord that's going through some of this like polyester fluff or whatever. And like you could just break it and then it like falls apart. It's not easy to tie together. Like I sort of hated the yarn. Like it's just not my bag, right? I, I get people use it. And I think if you use like a loose stitch and whatever, it's got its charm. 
Um, because the second thing I made was also in this and I had a much easier time with it, but, um, I used also hobby. Um, you'll see these also featured in a second, but I made some of these teeny tie crochet, um, flowers. I had some beads in, in my stash and then also like a little crochet horn. So here's this little egg of corn. Um, it's just called the unicorn egg. That's the pattern name. It is by Ekaterina, um, Chirkova. I enjoyed that. I mean, like, seriously, I would make more of these probably in a different yarn though. This, I maybe want a set, but it's so cute. It's so cute. Like what a fun little decoration. Be a fun thing to make for Theo to have multiple of, but like, it's not like high on my list to remake. Let's just say that I would do it. It's not high on my list. Would I use that yarn again? Like probably not. The next thing is the thing I can't find. It's in the baby's room somewhere. She's taking a nap right now. So I didn't want to go in and disturb her, but I will put a picture up here. This is called Layla Bunny. Layla Bunny is, um, it's the name of the pattern. It is by, um, Be Hooked Crochet and Knitting. It is a, um, also bulky weight stuffy. Like it's just an amigurumi. It's all sewn, sewn pieces together. It doesn't have you, like you can't really manipulate the limbs or anything, but like it was easy. It was fine. Just, just fine. I wouldn't make it like a lot. I don't love that like floppy style, but it was a cute bunny. Um, the ears are really nice and cute. At the time that I gave it to Theo, it was like as big as her. <laughs> so it was really cute. Um, she's not really into stuffies right now. Like she'll kind of play with them a little bit and then she just like throws them, which is what she does to all her toys. Um, I started this March 20th and finished it April 1st. So that was 12 days. Oh, the egg, unicorn egg. I didn't tell you. I did that March 30th and I finished it March 30th. That's when I started it. So it took me one day, zero days, one day. Yeah. So 12 days to finish that. Uh, and at the same day I finished, um, I started this on March 25th and I finished it April 1st. That was the deadline. I had to finish it April 1st and do my post. Um, and I just had to really string these guys together. I think I had them done pretty quickly, but this is uh, called the Easter Bunny Garland. And I have this place in my house. I have this big book, um, uh, built-in bookcase in our front room that's got books and other things like knickknacks in it. And I put little hooks up there because, uh, if you go on my Instagram, you can see a picture of both of these things, but, um, I made these like the itty bitty beanies and I strung them together in a garland with some pom-poms. Well, I did the same thing with these little bunnies, um, but I just made bunnies. And so I, I strung them together on that. You can see that like a whatever that yarn is, the honey bunny. Um, but these are not made in honey bunny. These are all individually. It's a little bit of a, a rat's nest right now, but these are little bunnies and their butts go out. They don't have faces or anything. They just, and so they're strung. You can see they're strung on the inside like that. So when they go across as a garland, they're just these very adorable little bunny butts. Um, I love these little bunny butts. They're so cute. So I just put that as a re replacement for my, um, Christmas hats. I, I should get more decoration. So there's always something yarn garland across the, across that maybe one day. Um, okay. Uh, do I have anything to say about it? Would I recommend it? It was a free pattern. All three of those were free patterns, by the way. I did that. So if, in case anybody wanted to join, um, I like posted what patterns I'd be doing this because it's like supposed to get your followers to buy hobby yarn or do the patterns or tag hobby, whatever. Um, I used free patterns for all of them and I really enjoyed, um, the Easter Bunny Garland was easy. I actually added, I, I modded it. I, I, they were too small. I think that I used, I think it called for like a worst weight yarn, but the yarn I got from them was like a sport weight. Um, also just like acrylic yarn. And I just decided to, I think it's called feather or something. Um, I just decided to make an extra round in all of the places to make, to make it a little bit bigger. Uh, they turned out great. They were super easy. Like it did not take long to make one of those. I just stuffed them with like a teeny bit of polyfill and boom, bunny butts. Now, uh, we are already into April. So here is a test knit. You guys thought I was done test knitting. Oh no, not done test knitting. Um, here are socks I test knit again for Carly Perrin. Oh, I did not talk about these yet because that was my January socks, but uh, I will talk about more. I love Carly Perrin patterns. Um, she's Northwoods Knit Co. on Instagram, and these are called the Sunday Morning Socks. They are a DK weight sock. It's a fingering and a mohair held together. I made this with Grenwy, a single ply from them, and a Hobby Diablo 
which is that yarn you guys I hate that's in my seaside holiday sweater or tee that I'm I'm gifting I'm, I'm donating I I hate that yarn it feels awful on my chest my feet don't care though um, and I thought if I'm going to do like a mohair on my foot, I'm going to make it a cheap mohair. So that's what I did. Um, they're super cozy. They're like a little slouchy. I don't have much to say about them. Um, the pattern repeat is just like a little slip stitchy waffly type look. Um, they remind me of waffles, which I think for Sunday morning is super appropriate. Um, I would never recommend Javi Diablo to anybody. Like I love a lot of Javi yarns and I just, I like hate that yarn. Um, I, uh, made these, uh, April 31st to April 3rd. So it took me three days to make them. They did fly by. I mean, like I was knitting them kind of fast, but like also they really did fly by. I'd always recommend Carly patterns. I think her sock fits are great. The next two patterns I'm going to talk about at the same time, but I'm just going to tell you my timeline because I did start them and end them differently. So I started this, what we're calling the baby garter rib tat. It does not have a pattern. I kind of just like looked at some baby patterns I had for sizing number of stitches to cast on for the yarn I had. And I just sort of made it up as I went. Um, I've made enough hats. I can do that. Also this one, I'll tell you why it was, it didn't work out. Um, with the original pattern I had. So this, I started April 1st, finished April 7th. So it took me seven days and, um, now I'll pop the picture up and the picture is also with the surplus baby cardigan. 3005 is the <laughs> number. Um, it is a really old pattern from 1977 y'all. Um, I started at February 1st. I ended it April 9th. It took me 67 days and I'll talk a little bit about why. Uh, but, um, it is by Bernhard Ullman Co. So this is like from a really old knitting magazine. I had the physical copy of the pattern. Um, and this was my loose ends project. So this is one of my favorite knits for the year, just in what I was doing. Um, I really did not love the pattern. And it's a really old pattern. The instructions were sort of okay, but the real issue was this is sweet. So I made this for um, actually uh, local. I said this in the, the podcast last week because it was a highlight for me for 2023, but I made this, um, in case you don't know, uh, the loose ends project is a charity organization. Um, I think it's two or three gals. I think they're actually based here in Washington that created this organization and they have finishers across the world. Um, so that anybody who's got, uh, like somebody who becomes disabled, just unable to do the craft anymore because of age or, you know, injury or anything. Um, and or they pass away and there's unfinished projects that they leave, you can submit them to get finished by a finisher. And they try to match you with local people just to save on shipping and all that kind of stuff to be, you know, eco-responsible and also cost-responsible. Um, and then obviously you finish them for free. The finisher finishes them for free. You can sign up for whichever crafts you feel proficient in. You do not have to say yes to the project. So if you, for whatever reason, sign up and then like aren't able to take it on at that time, you don't have to say yes. Most people don't have a hard deadline. Um, this was a pattern that was started by a sweet lady who knitted for tons of years and um, was making it for her first great grandchild. By the time she submitted it for the Loose Ends project, the second great-grandchild was coming along, and it was, like, about the one-year size. The toddler, who was, like, I think three at the time, actually was able to wear this because um, Sweet Sweet Grandma started this, Great Grandma, started this um, with a DK weight yarn for fingering weight pattern, and she knit to pattern, um, which just means it was, like, slightly odd-shaped. It was definitely wider than it should have been and not quite... It was, it was about a, like proportionally much wider than it, it should have been tall. Um, she was using, I don't know, I think the recommended needles were like what you need to get gauged. Like, and I, and she was using these kind of strange needles that I had to like put them in. They were rubber. They had no numbers on them. And I had to like put them into my like little yarn sizers I, or needle size binder. I started this and I was like, I need a minute to figure out what I want to do. I picked it back up after a couple of projects were like done and out of my queue. Um, and I just had to do a lot of math to make the, so the sweater is like a crossover and buttons on both sides, um, little baby cardigan. And I really need to just like figure out how to do the math to make it not be super strange. Right. So, um, it ended up being beautiful. It's very cute. The yarn is, uh, nice. It's something like Bo Peep something yarn. I think it's also maybe discontinued, but the hat, I absolutely could not do the pattern. 
for a fingering white baby hat with that DK yarn. Like there was no possible way. It had these cute little like flaps, but I was like, I can't even, I'm not gonna do the math to make it super crazy. So I just did like a little garter ribbed um, hat, which looked nice with um, the sweater. Yeah, I mean, I enjoyed making it. I, I pulled in buttons from my stash. I, yeah, the um, woman who picked it up for me, she was local, so she came to my house to pick it up. We chatted for a second. She was super, super sweet. She brought me a bottle of wine. It was a really great experience. I would absolutely finish for them again if I got contacted. You just kind of stay in their queue. Obviously, like this person who submitted it doesn't knit, so she's like, she could tell me. The, the reason I kept it as it was instead of doing some math or changing anything is like I really wanted to keep all of the parts that great grandma had knit so I did not rip out any stitches except for one half lens shoulder because she just messed up a count um I wanted to keep those stitches there so that's what I did that is all that's what I have to say about those two projects my next project was something I started April 11th finished April 12th so it took me one day and it is called I can't actually I have no idea how this is pronounced the elasmotherium maybe beanie um this is a beanie pattern by wanded 527 jenny noto she does all of her pattern names have been like harry potter um magical world of harry potter inspired names i have knit so many of her patterns i love her patterns i've tested for her a lot of times i really 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 do love all of her patterns if you need like a well a, like a well-fitting beanie especially a, a pattern that has like multiple weights in it. So this one is bulky. This is made out of Malabriga Novento, another yarn. I'm going to say, go ahead and buy it. It's great. It's, it's a nice, reliable, single ply, bulky weight yarn. Um, this colorway is called Rosalinda and I love it. I'm obsessed. This is not one that I've kept for me, but it is so cute. Isn't that cute? Um, you can see this kind of like fun uh, little swoopy cable stitch. Um, yeah, I mean, I absolutely, I always recommend Jenny patterns. If you want like something fun and unique, like not everything is like, she has a bunch of patterns that are kind of like this, where they're like, they make a fabric of like a cable or a left twist stitch. And that's really nice. Um, but she has some like really unique looking cables, like very distinct, um, looks for hat for accessories. It's all accessories. That's all I have to say about that. Um, and that's like just the adult regular size I don't know the large medium when I don't know who they're going to be for I usually just like pick a middle size I can't show you the next one because those are sock of the month but um the next one which was part of the same test knit so I did a test for Megan Gonzalez who is nurture knitwear uh she is great she's got some really nice sock patterns out and these were Lord of the Rings inspired sock patterns to go out with Andy Andy with Brandy's first one collection pre-order um so you could get a sock set and then you can make these socks and I think like her pre-order was you know March or something like that so like this pattern was set to come out May 1st or June 1st like when people would be opening their yarns I think that's like what the the plan was I'll just put it on my hand so you can see how pretty this pattern is I'll also pop up a picture in a second but look at these isn't that gorgeous it's so pretty um, okay, so this is called the Helm's Deep Sock. Um, she does it in the Helm's Deep colorway, which you guys have seen before. It's this colorway here, which imagine that actually in this dark, dark blue. It's gorgeous. Uh, I made the size three, which is a large, um, probably 72 stitches. This little um, highlighter e color, I think. It's at least something I got from Erin. That's why I put it as. Um, this, and that could have been just a D-sash thing too, but this pretty colorway is Hickory Creek, Hickory Lane Handmade Classic Sock, and I really love, I love the color. I like, I loved working with this yarn. The, the tonal, like, I still think if we're variegated, you can see the pattern really well. Will it focus on it? Yeah, you can see it even from there. So, um, I definitely would make these again. Um, they were a little bit of a slog only because like you have to look at the chart every single row. Um, and something fun is happening all the time. And like, if you can see that I have never, ever done such a fun cable before where like all of these stitches are just like doing crazy travels. They, st they come together. Like, I mean, it it's pretty wild. Like, I think there's only ever six stitches, but like, because they break more than one time, sometimes like here, all the cables are single, 
but here you've got double on the outside and single in the middle. Anyway, it was super fun. I had a lot of fun. They, I thought they were really engaging, even though they were definitely like a focus project. So that is my Helm's Deep Socks. And I like the colors. I thought they would be like really fun. Really fun. Okay, that's the end of projects for April. Um, we have some more socks. Okay, so this pair of socks is my test knit. Another test knit? Are you kidding? I, I did say the numbers last week. Like, I did a lot of tests that were socks. Um, this test knit was for Jamie Lomax, who is Pacific Knit Co. Um, Jamie's local to me. She's in West Seattle. She's super nice. I've tested for her multiple times. I she has the she's like the the doodle kit lady. So the person who puts out all those fun um color work doodle kits with doodles being like they're usually small motifs that you can substitute in and out. Um, it's easy to change patterns. She's got lots of customized ability in her patterns. Um, and also you can just use those motifs in anything. Uh, but um, this one was basic doodle socks. So it was her basic doodle kit, like uh, all of those, there's like 22 motifs or something. Um, and you can use any of them in the pattern. And like the test was to use them however we wanted, but you could just only use from the basic doodle. So, um, here is my basic doodle sock. I really loved, I really loved the process of making this sock. I really loved I love the outcome. There's a lot of low contrast happening in there, which I kind of did on purpose. I, I like this screams me. This is like fall to me. Like this, I don't know what about it. It's just like so fall, but that's how I think of like painted corn. That's like what it reminds me of. Um, it was my first Oliver Colorwork sock and it fits great. Uh, I had no problems. There's no float catching in this either because all of these basic doodles were, are like pretty, you know, they're four or so stitches, five maybe, um, in the repeat. So how fun is that? Don't they look nice? I love the inside of color work. Okay. Uh, that's it for those fun. I would totally recommend doing it again. You can make them 27,000 different ways, right? There's so many combinations. Um, great way to use scrap yarn. I thought the fit was really good. No, no things to complain about. That's all Backloop Yarn Co. Scraps I got from Erin that is actually Backloop Yarn Co. colors because I bought those colors for a color work tee slash sweater <laughs> for the future okay um and I started those April 26th and finished them May 1st yes May 1st which was five days I um the next one is a pattern that took me one day to finish just uh, I started May 3rd finished May 3rd and it is the eerie beanie it's like a slip stitch um, I think this one's actually done a little bit differently because of the way that the stitches, but it's like a swoopy slip stitch kind of pattern all over. It sort of looks like scales or something to me, like a, like a dragon scales. Anyway, I'll show you this one on too. Um, this one has a pretty, oop, pretty tight, uh, band. Struggling. Um, I don't know why, like, I think I made have made the like small adult size or something. Like it just feels really tight here. Uh, but it's really cute on the color is fantastic. I love this color. Um, this is anniversario. Um, I'm a big fan. I thought that the pattern was pretty easy. I mean, obviously I'm not really sure why this is the tightest band ever. It's probably just me, not the pattern. Um, it, yeah, it was easy to figure out, you know, like the two row or three row repeat. I don't know what it is, but, um, the decreases are cute at the top actually, even without a pom-pom. Um, it sort of ends and has like, just like a nice sort of like swoopy thing happening. Um, I don't have a lot to say about any of those hats and accessories there. It was fine. It was an easy, easy, fast knit. Um, the next thing I finished though, you guys, we're finally into stuff that we, that we should talk about. And that's all the garments. So, um, we're an hour in hour and a half. I don't even know. We're so far in. I'm going to try to edit as much as I can out of this. Um, this is my peep show pullover. You guys have seen this a couple of times or at least once already. Um, I wore it for one of my early episodes. I think this is the back. Um, and it is a circular yoke um, t-shirt made with a single strand of, um, of slub yarn and like you can see here's my little baby slubs all poking out um it has this peep line here 
that is also with that Grenouille color that I single ply yarn that I used in my morning socks, my Sunday morning socks. Um, it's all the edges are also finished in that. And I made a lot of pattern mods to this. It is not a pattern I would knit again. It is not a pattern I would recommend to anybody um, because the shaping is odd. Uh, I don't think it's correct. Um, it was tested in larger sizes and I don't really understand how how anybody got that to fit as is. Um, it was, there were no cast on stitches for the un, uh, the underarm and the circle was really big, but the sleeves would have been really small and it was just like oddly proportioned. So I got part almost to the last repeat, like a increase and I ripped back one and I did my last two increases differently, distrib different distribution because I also wanted a little bit more sleeve freedom. Um, and then I, uh, added underarm stitches. Yeah. It was just like, I, I modded this a ton for it to fit me. It fits great though. I love this. I wear it all the time in the summer. I just, yeah, I would find another t-shirt that is like similar. Um, I think anything that's pretty much stock in net would show off a slub. I just didn't know what to do with the slub when I had it. And I knew I had enough for a t-shirt. I had two skeins. I used pretty much all of it for this. And I, I just like now that I know that it just in stockinette will pop out great. I could use any pattern. I do have a little bit more of it um, in here. This is uh, also I think all of this is Hello Stella fibers. Um, they have like a slub called Savvy Stella is the is the yarn base. I um I will use it again. I will use that. I don't like totally love slub yarn. It's really nice to wear actually, but um and that gauge is pretty loose, so it's like nice and airy. Um that's that's what I have to say about it I started it March May 2nd and I finished it May 13th so it took me 11 days I started this this is the first project I knit start to finish while I was in my knitting group and I remember that because well maybe like the eerie but like I like asked some advice about the yarn and things um before making it and so that's pretty fun okay the second or my my next garment to talk about is this is the Sunbeam Pullover. Um, we talked about this the other week in my Do I Keep It video. Um, this is one I will over dye if Ariel is willing to help me. Um, I know some people said just donate it, but I think that there may be hope for it still. Um, I do like the pattern. Okay, Sunbeam Pullover by Chantel, who is Knititude. Um, I, it, she has tons of great patterns. She's got a lot of beginner friendly patterns. Like she says they're beginner friendly, right? Because she puts a ton of explanation into how the construction is going to work for this. I hadn't done a sweater. So this is similar to the sorrel where I think you do this right side out and then you just do a, like a flip sort of make a DS and then you flip it inside out and then you knit, um, you knit instead of having to purl the whole body, uh, which obviously that's much better. Um, so it was nice to learn that she had a lot of explanation about how to do that, um, which I then used in the sorrel I made. Um, I just hate this color. It's Linebrand Woolies yarn. Of course, I'd use that again. Maybe not on a sweater for myself. Um, on a hard wearing outer thing, great. Uh, something for my kid, probably. Lots of other things, lots of other uses for Woolies. Um, I like the fit. It's a like the sleeves are a little bit snug on me. I don't know. Like I just personally don't think I would need a ton of this kind of sweater. So I don't think I'd make it again. But if someone like if I had a, someone who was making a sweater for who really loved the style, I would do it. I, I didn't have any like complaints about the pattern. It was great. And I totally do recommend a Chantel pattern, like generally speaking. Okay, just so everybody's aware. I started that August 1st, 2022. <laughs> I finished it May 22nd, 2023. It was not quite a year old. Um, and that was a make along with a friend who still has never finished hers. Uh, one day we'll get her there. Not a lot of projects done in May. That was a pretty slow month. Um, I think June is even less. There's four. And the first one is almost a throwaway. But I actually started this in like February of 2022. February 6, 2022. And I did not finish it until June 6, 2023. Not because it took me that long to knit it. Just like languishing whip. It just sat to the side. This is my second ever Augustine's 22 bow. Um, Augustine's is a company run by um, Anne-Sophie Velling. She's really beautiful, like European style 
timeless piece kind of things. Um, but I'm kind of a, like, I love these little bows that you can make. Um, they are fingering and mohair held together. I feel like my never look as delicate as hers does. Like, I feel like my, my, like maybe I need to knit looser for it or something. Um, but you attach it to a hair tie. And so I can just throw this over a ponytail and then you have like this really cute little bow. It's so cute. Um, you could also do it like onto a clip or something or on nothing if you wanted to just put a clip in there. Um, I've, this is my second one I've ever made. I made the first one with like some cheaper yarn and I wanted to make it with something really nice. This is knitting for olive mohair and knitting for olive merino, just like the light, the light merino, um, which I got from a D stash and I just really love it. It's cute. It's very fall vibes and it like makes me feel very like adorable when I wear it. <laughs> Sometimes you got to feel adorable. Um, I would totally recommend making that. It was, it's super easy. It's the construction is really easy. The instructions to make the bow are very easy to understand. Um, I kind of hate like that, the wrapping it because it felt really thick to me. I would maybe just like do that a different way, but I don't know how. So maybe I wouldn't. Um, that took me that little tiny thing took me 485 days to finish. It's messing with my average. Um, I don't have any, you know, I don't have, I'm trying to get rid of the languishing whips and just casting on things I'm actually going to finish. Okay. The next thing is something that's not here. This was a gift knit. This is a cardigan that I crocheted for one of my best girlfriends. Um, it was, I, I started at June 12th, finished at June 16th. So it took me four days. It is bulky weight. It's a hue and me yarn. Um, it's actually will look familiar to you because I am throwing out the rest of this yarn. I don't love it on me. It looks really great on her. Um, and it is a pattern by, it's a free pattern. It's called the Twilight Button Cardigan. It is by Grace and her blog is for the frills and it's just on her blog and it's free. Um, I kind of hate blog patterns because like all the ads and stuff, but it was really super easy to create. The like waffly stitch pattern was fun. It's crocheted. Um, it went fast and I wanted to give her something like she doesn't crochet. She knits, um, this friend who I made it for. So I thought it'd be fun to give her something in a craft she doesn't do. Um, that's just like more hand knit things to wear or handmade things to wear, which is so fun. Um, this friend who I made it for is not super into the really, really nice yarns yet. I'll probably make her something out of really nice yarns next, but, um, I wanted something to give her something that she would know how to care for. And so that's why I did that yarn. I mean, you guys kind of know my thoughts on the Hue and Me, like it, it's good for certain things for sure. Um, this was a great example to use it for. It was really fluffy in that too, like, because it's really airy, that stitch, um, it was nice. And I did it just in time for her birthday party, which was that day. I think I put that buttons on that morning um, before I went to the party. I um, Next pattern is um, my one of my very favorite patterns of the year, which is my Tulsa Tea. Um, this is a pattern by Rebecca Klo, who is the Crayabea. I made size five. Um, I did one adjustment. I think I did one size smaller for my cast on number of stitches and then added those to make my neckband a little bit more snug. I'd probably even do less, less cast on stitches next time. It sits nice and open, which is cute. Um, I just don't like want to have the bra strap slip. So like, I don't know for me, maybe just like a little less. Um, there are, there is short row shaping. It is like the most basic DK weight kind of open gauge t-shirt pattern she what she does though in the pattern is she puts like a whole slew of pictures in a second pdf that shows you mods that her test knitters did and they were really great mods this is one of the mods this is coco knits um modification for the eyelet she did two versions of this one white one black i uh, went to her ravelry page looked up her notes and i just made made her modifications. I did a couple extra things for myself, but nothing really noteworthy. Um, and I made this out of Yarnaceous Yarns. One of the gemstone colorways, which you can still get uh, as like a custom order, like not custom order, just like you can get as a made to order um, or made to dye yarn that's called Pre-Night. And I love this color. Like it's not really the best color for me, but I just like, it makes me feel so summer and I like to wear like black shorts and like so cute. Um, I'm pretty sure I wore this to flock and I was like real into it. 
Okay. Um, I would, I'm 100% going to make this pattern again, maybe this summer, um, at least one of them. It's something I would gift to somebody too, because it's really easy to like estimate size and stuff, just like the way that the fit is. Um, I would also use your Nacious yarn again. I love your Nacious yarn. I think she dyes really pretty colors. As you can see in that, there's like, it's a semi-solid, right? So there's a little bit of color variance and that just makes it so interesting, especially in something that like has a little going on, but not a lot. Okay, on the same day, oh, and I started that project on June 17th and I fish finished it on June 25th. Like it was so fast because that gauge is loose and it was so engaging the eyelets. I probably wouldn't make it with eyelets again. I would do something different, but like I would go to the mods and like look at other people's pattern ideas because it's just like such a good canvas. Um, actually Rebecca has a version where she put on like little applique flowers. Like she didn't actually embroider them on. She just put them on, but I would love to do this with embroidered flowers like that I embroider on. I feel like that would be so cute. Okay. The next knit is one we just saw last week. This is my high time top. Um, this is a pattern by Golden Boy Knits. That's her name's Kimberly. Um, it's her first ever pattern that she published, and it's a knock em out pattern. It's awesome. It's super cute. It's a scoop neck bottom up knit bottom up um t shirt. Uh, it's a little bit cropped as it's it's supposed to be a little bit cropped. I did make it semi cropped, not quite as much as the pattern. Um, I also modded the sleeves to be a little bit longer. They're really just a cap sleeve um, as written. It sits super nice on me though. I really love it. I, I think I have the other mods listed in my Ravelry page, um, but this is made with left and right twist stitches and a horizontal braid stitch. So you can actually just change your fringe out and it's always going to sit in the same place. And I've changed my fringe. Um, I will put a picture here of the original fringe. And then I put something that I would actually wear more because I was like, I wasn't going to wear that on meetings and stuff. And this one I'm comfortable to wear for work things. Um, it is fun, but subdued. Uh, I would probably make that again in another fun color, um, with like the same color, uh, fringe. Cause those versions are so fun too. Okie dokie. That one I started May 29th and I finished June 25th. I also made a size extra large. Uh, so that's 27 days. And um, it was my first bottom up top ever. So that was really fun. I've done many of them since this year. Um, and that was a test knit. I would totally recommend making it. I do want to make it again. I, I made that out of uh, Cascade Yarns um, Eco Alpaca. I don't think I'd recommend that yarn to people. I just think there's a lot other, and, and maybe like that was a really old D stash yarn. So like maybe they're, it's improved, but it felt like there were guard hairs or something in there. It was really prickly. And that pack I feel like is supposed to be soft. So I was a little bit disappointed. I have since conditioned it with like hair conditioner and wool wash and let it soak for a really long time. And it is softer to wear, but it is a little bit like, it's a little scratchy still. I'm just like right at the edge where I can like feel the line. I'm like, just touch it a lot so um I'm fine I'll continue wearing it but I would just like I don't know I feel like you should test it on yourself with a swatch <laughs> sit on your chest first before you invest in a whole sweater quantity okay um okay the next one is socks I don't have here and our um sock of the month but we're into July I had a lot of things happen in July so I had test knits or I had sample knits that I did for flock. I did three sample knits for flock, which is crazy. You are correct. Um, I made, uh, well, I don't have any of them here. So here's my notes. I made the sorrel by wool and pine. I've made a lot of wool and pine patterns this year. Um, at the very end, I'll do a recap of designer, most popular designer. Um, maybe it's wool and pine because I've made a lot of their things. I really love all of their patterns. Um, they're really like, I just, I feel like they take really good pictures, like photos. So like, I'm always sucked in. I'm always like really wanting to make the things, but they've got some like fun and unique techniques, um, to make these patterns. So this one was, uh, the, the sorrel is dip stitch pattern. Um, it, similar to like the sunbeam where it's just like the rays out, uh, though there are two separate lengths of ending the, the dip stitches. 
I like dip stitches. I know some people really, really hate them. Um, I would make this again. I got yarn to make it again for myself um, from one collection and I will make it because I really, really enjoyed making the pattern. I really loved the outcome, even though it was like these pinks are very much not Megan colors, but this was for La Mercery and it was um, made in size four, I think, size three or four. So not for me. Um, I think it was knitting for all of mohair held with their special lobby and Amy colorway, which was made for them, which is called autumn hydrangea, but it's like the flock colorway, um, special release. It's really, it's really pretty. Like I would totally use that yarn, um, for not a garment for me, but like maybe something for baby. It's super, super pretty. Um, okay. And I liked the lobby anime, Amy. It was like her, her Merino twist, um, which maybe is also a special base for La Mercery. They have like a really special relationship. Anyway, it's, um, they're a little bit pricey, like all of those yarns. It's not super different from any other two ply fingering weight yarn I've held or I've, I've used. Um, but it's, I think it's a hundred percent super wash Merino and it's it feels super lovely. So totally recommend. Um, okay. And that was displayed at Flock, obviously. And so that was really fun. Um, I was doing a test knit at the same time. And here's this test knit. It is my Brooklyn Raglan Light. This is a pattern by Tori Yu, who is Tori Knits NYC. It is a pretty simple stockinette. Um, this is the light version. She has a DK pattern that came out like maybe in 2022 or something. Um, and then this is the fingering weight version of it. It's got short row shaping in the back. It's got this lovely, um, I don't know what this is called. I think she calls it a broken seed stitch. I'm pretty sure. Um, pattern. And I thought that like a variegated, really, I was nervous to use this yarn and Sylvan convinced me, just do it. <laughs> I had enough in stash and I wanted to use something variegated because I thought it would show off the seed stitch pattern. Live, it really does. It's like such a fun way to see um, all that variation in the yarn and it's not just a stockinette sweater for it. Um, but the bulk of it is stockinette. It's really cute. It's not a bag in color. Obviously, like you can tell, it looks so much better than this than this but I love this and I have a really fun knit outfit which is my overalls that I are read I've read overalls that I wear with this every time I wear it and I just like it just makes me so happy um so I don't care don't care wear it anyway um I look okay when I'm wearing makeup in this and so this is what I do I started that May 26th I finished it July 13th which means it took me 48 days oh I didn't tell you for the sorrel um I started that May 19th and finished it July 9th, which was 51 days. That one felt like it took me forever. And partly just, I was doing all these other samples. I was trying to get a lot of big projects done at once. Um, the next project is something I started May 1st and finished July 18th. So that took me 78 days, more just because I put it in timeout for a while. Um, this is called the Bambina Ripple Blanket. I made this um, also a free pattern from... We crochet design team. I made this for uh, my husband's cousin who was having a baby. Um, he's a real cute baby. Uh, they were coming to town. They're temporarily living in Arizona. And so for her husband, like do a work thing. And so I, I want to make sure it was done for her. So even though I put, I like did most of 75% of it before July, like right after I started it. And then I put it in timeout. Um, I put it in timeout because I didn't love the colors that I would like ended up using. And I was like, do I rip it back? And I was like, you know what? He's a baby. He doesn't care. Um, it's made with like mostly pound of love, which is line brand. I think like acrylic yarn leftover from other baby blankets I made the year before. And yeah, I mean, it's just, it's fine. It's, it's an okay pattern. I hadn't done I just, I like, don't love crocheting as much as I used to. So I also like crocheting a whole blanket felt like a little arduous to me. And I just, I didn't, I didn't love the whole process. Um, I don't know that I'd recommend the pattern. I mean, there's nothing super special about this pattern. It was fine. Um, this yarn for that pattern though, doesn't have, have as much drape as like the pattern pictures, which show a nicer yarn and, um, like more shiny drape. Okay, so before flock happened, I had two more samples I had to finish. So I, these are both samples for Urnaceous, the next two projects. I finished them one day apart because I was sort of working on them uh, at the same time to make sure I got them done on time. And um, Maggie, who runs Urnaceous, was super great. She sent me yarn 
in plenty of time to finish it and I actually didn't have to ship it back to her. I blocked them at home and then I gave them to her in person the day of flock, like on Friday morning. I dropped them at her house. Um, I, uh, for the, this is the moon set tea. Put a picture here. It's by Ozetta. I talked about this yes last week because I want to make one for myself. I really like enjoyed the process. I love that v-neck. I like how that v-neck is constructed. I liked the construction of the garment. It was my first time doing um like the way that like doing a v-neck in that style. So you kind of do I think you start with the back panel and then you build the two sides and then connect them and like you do the collar at the same time. It's just a really cool way to construct a a tee. Um I had to read it the sleeves because I forgot that I had gone up a needle size and I didn't put like a good note somewhere and it like it sat a week and then I picked it up for sleeves and I did like the pattern recommended size and they were too small. It's a whole thing. Um, anyway, I used a color called Basalt in um, Salta Fingering from Urinaceous. I love that yarn. It's super nice. It's like a, it's a Merino nylon blend, I think. And um, yeah, I had a great time knitting it for the most part and I definitely will make that pattern again. Um, the next one is another of the Yarnaceous samples. Um, oh, sorry. Moonset time frame. I started that June 8th and I finished it July 28th. So it took me 50 days to finish. I, the next one is the Copperton shawl, which is here. I, this is a pattern by, um, Taylor Harris. I think her, her like, um, yarn company, maybe says like Taylor Ann Harris. Anyway, uh, this took me 54 days. So June 6th, I started and I finished July 30th. I really, really enjoyed this shawl. It's a two skein shawl pattern. You use most of two skeins. I think she think I had to end a little bit early because I was running out. I was running out of the main color. And this one I think was also salted fingering. I didn't look it up, but it's okay. Um, it was another garnaceous colors. Uh, it's copper and natural and yeah, I mean, I, I think I'll flash another picture of it if I didn't already. Like, it's really beautiful, the front, the back, like how I just like had it hanging for pictures. Um, It's a really lovely shawl. I think I probably would make it again. I was, I, I, I say that, but like the pattern was really fun. It was pretty engaging. You only have like three types of stitch, like stitch patterns to repeat. And she does them like an interesting way. There were a lot of ends to weave in. Not my favorite thing um, about it, but also like there were, five sections I think of that elongated stitch which is like you have to wrap your yarn twice one row so you just and it I don't know why that takes freaking forever but then you have to drop it and knit the like your stitches to make this like elongated lace stitch it's annoying it's an annoying stitch to do and when you have like hundreds and hundreds of them in a row like it was like sometimes like one day I just did an elongated stitch row and I was like can't look at this shawl again um if I didn't have a timeline maybe I would make it but also maybe I'd never finish it so I don't know um but I thought I like I think it's stunning like I think that the the end product is beautiful so like if I knew someone who really loved shawls I would definitely make it for them I just haven't made that many shawls in my life so I'm not committed to making the same one twice okay that's all I did for July I did almost nothing for August because I think I was starting a bunch of projects, but this is my book seat. Um, this is a pattern by Molly Conrad, who is the White Owl Crochet Co. And I love, I love this pattern. Um, it is a circular yoke, kind of open gauge fingering and mohair held together, or I mean, any fluff, I guess, that you can get gauge with um sweater I think I mean you use like a four millimeter or four and a half millimeter or something um needle so it was like nice and open airy it's got these really cute little details which you can see better when it's on um but you have these like these eyelets an eyelet row at all of the finishing my cuffs inside out um at the cuffs and at the hem it's gorgeous the details are just they're, they're amazing. Um, I learned something new on this. My, the technique I learned was Japanese short rows and I am a big fan. It was perfect for this. It was, it was really cool. I would do them again for sure. Um, especially with like an unruly yarn. If you wanted to add short rows with like a, like a boucle, learn Japanese short rows. They will save your life. Okay. 
um yeah I love it it's super moody it's just what I was going for um I made this with Knit Picks Capretta Superwash which is a fingering weight yarn and I use um drops mohair and black and I really enjoyed I like had just made the sorrel before and that was with um knitting for olive mohair which is twice as much right um and drops for an affordable version of that mohair is similarly soft I did not wear the sorrel so I can't say that definitely um but it to, to knit with felt similarly soft I don't have any complaints about it whatsoever um and I've worn it many times and for me it's not itchy so love it okay uh, the next one, oh, that, that I also, I started on July 7th and I finished it on August 16th. It was a test knit, um, and it took me 40 days and I finished it well ahead of the timeline, which I think she even bumped out a little bit more because some people needed more time. Um, it's published now and it's gorgeous. So yeah, I recommend. Do, when I make it again, like, I think there's a couple other versions that are similar, but like maybe raglan, like, I don't, I don't know that I would make it again, but I'm not opposed to it, especially like in the same, same color instead of having that like sort of marbly, a morally look like I would like maybe a, the same color that would be fun who knows um the next knit to be done is my alley sweater light um this is a pattern by Sarah Opie who is s knits on Instagram um these alley patterns are named for alley from explore knits and fibers um this pattern I started July 23rd finished it August 27th, which was 35 days, like right at the end of the test knit. It was also like just five weeks, I think, for the test. It's too short for a test knit for a sweater. I won't do that to myself again. I felt a little bit stressed about it. Um, this is made with Drops Fable, which is a fingering weight yarn that's like a super wash and nylon blend. Um, it's like a 75-25, so it's like really kind of more of a sock yarn. Like it's it's really sturdy. Um, I don't love it. It's not the super softest. I think if I washed it again, like it might do a little bit better. Um, but I'm leery to wash it again because uh, I made it with a special skein of Montana Crochet Co. yarn and it bled everywhere. I'm um, not really sure why. I mean, it's a purple yarn that happens. I didn't, I washed it cold. I washed it in wool wash. I didn't, I like dipped it in and it instantly started bleeding everywhere. I am not going to wash every skein of yarn that comes into my house beforehand. It did not bleed on my hands at all. I had no warning that this would happen and you know, whatever. The pattern itself, I love. I would totally make this again. I, I would like love to make this for a friend. I think it's just like such a unique and fun sweater. Um, the color work was really fun and engaging. The only part I don't love is like this last row. I think it's like so easy to see, like you have to trap your float across. I honestly like would almost stop at stop mid diamond and probably be happier with it. It's like what I would consider doing for a next one. Um, but I love like, I love it. I do really love, um, the you do your short rows in this fun extra color work section I would absolutely make it again though even for myself doing like an opposite the gift pattern I got from doing this test knit is the Ali sweater so I'll make that one first the DK version of this um also dark to light I, you know swapping these but I did have fun I had fun making it um recommend the pattern don't recommend Montana crochet Co purples but I mean also her yarn is gorgeous it's just it's an unfortunate thing purples bleed and you know they say knit a swatch and then wash it I didn't do that um yeah so that's that I mean that the also the finishings are so cute you do that little pattern here um it was my first time doing color work in short rows like that and I thought that was really really fun um so I Okay, and that was August. So um, September was really busy and more because I had lots of projects that were started and kind of like not go on hold, but they were um, getting all finished around the same time. So um, staple tea. So on July 28th, I started this and I finished it on September 9th. So it took me 43 days. Um, just mostly because I was doing other things. We had a pretty generous test timeline. This was a test knit for... Um, uh, Jeanette Gaudreau, who is, uh, the new wave knitting, she has some really amazing, um, made to measure 
made to measure pattern. So like you put your measurements in this one, actually it's any gauge, any measurement, I guess that's what we call it. Any gauge, any measurement pattern. So any yarn, um, you just have to do a gauge swatch. So you know what your gauge is and then, and you pick whatever needles you want. So like, if you want a super loose, if you want a super tight, like do whatever you want. And then you put in your measurements and it spits you out your increases. And it's just a simple raglan, you know, increase. I do really love this kind of high neckline, this was my oldest knit, um, oldest yarn knit of the year. This uh, is like really old sock sets I got in 2016 from Knit Picks. So it's Knit Picks Stroll Tweed. And then it's mixed with a hobby yarn. Um, it's called like Rainbow Sock or something like that. And it's just like all like tonal sock colors. Um, this is similar to Fable. Maybe even like, maybe the same amount of like mehness about like using it. It's kind of kind of scratchy um I think it'll soften up a little bit more over time uh knitting with it was not super fun because it was a little bit rougher on my fingers but I love the striping I did this um this color is the same that's actually in those Helms Deep socks and it is a, a traveling so every every repeat of colors it's on a different stripe all the way to the bottom and I did that this was just out of my brain colors and I'm so happy with how it turned out love love loved it it's probably, it's, it's one of my favorite knits from the year for sure. Even though like that yarn is not anything special. Like it was just like the process, the making, like how cool the pattern is, like everything about it. Totally recommend the pattern. If you haven't tried any of Jeanette's staple patterns, I think, you know, they're really basic. They're all like stockinette patterns, but like you can do anything you want with those. Just like the Tolstoy, you can totally mod it. Um, but the fact that you can just make it for any size. So if you're like maybe oddly shaped, you're, you're a lot longer, you're a lot boxier, like just whatever, whatever the thing is, it's so cool that it just spits you out and increases. You could maybe use those for other patterns in your life. If you figure out like the ratios that it comes up with for you so that like you could make more things that fit you well. And I think it's a good learning exercise. Um, and it was the first time I used one of those. So I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was like a really, really enjoyable experience. Okay. Um, my next pattern is down here is, uh, completed is something that was, I, I felt like took me forever. It took me 54 days. So not really much longer than the average. Um, but this is my wild IVT. Um, what, what did I categorize it as? Oh, I categorized it as a tea or tank. Um, it is, uh, I started it July 19th. I finished it on September 11. I, um, this is the Wild Ivy. I made it, um, for me, it's a wool and pine pattern, another wool and pine pattern. It is one that I got for payment for one of those test knits. And I just really have been looking at this one for years, like uh, whenever it came out 20, early 2022. Um, so like more than a year, I'd been like covering, coveting it. Um, it is a uh, lace front scoopy neck kind of um, boxy neck fit um, pattern. I don't have like any real cleavage in it, but it does, you know, sit lower on my neckline. Um, I did add bust starts to this one. Um, it just has like, it has like decreases and then you increase again. So off me, it has like kind of an odd shape because it goes in and it goes out. I didn't complete all of the the re-increases. Um, I just was kind of over it. It fits me right at my hip. I didn't want to be a long shirt. I could have stopped the decreases a little bit earlier and done whatever, whatever. It looks great on. Um, and yeah, I really enjoy it. So hopefully I'm, I've been putting pictures of these knits on, but this one is really, really cute. Um, I've worn it a lot. This is made out of, um, Backloop Yarn Co's Cashmere DK. All I will say about that is as you would expect with any cashmere blend, um, it's pilly. It's a little bit pillier because it's got like a little bit of a halo. Um, I need to go in and just depill this. The yarn is fine. The structure of the yarn is fine. It's just, it probably won't, like it's not as hard wearing. That's just the, they, these kinds of sweaters aren't. Um, that's okay with me. It's more of a special occasion shirt. It's just, I've worn it like twice over the holidays. And it, so I like noticed the pilliness um, the other day. Here is my... <laughs> I'm going to keep it on the hanger actually because it's so cute. Um, this is a sweater I started September 2nd, finished September 17th. Um, this is like my second attempt. I frogged one earlier in the year because I started making it and then I put it down and then she was too big for it. Um, this is a Whidbey sweater for the baby. I made the one to two year size um, because I wanted her to be able to wear it for at least one full season of football. Um, and this is the matching accompaniment to, accompaniment to Mike's sweater. This is a wool and pine pattern. It's um, the Whidbey Sweater is usually like, oh, it's, the pattern is a very simple regular, no back shaping or anything, especially for a baby size. She doesn't need back shaping. Um, but it, 
is like intended to be plain so that you can weave over it and they gave weaving instructions and that's where really very cool um but i just um did a modified w uh to match mics and so this is just made out of the same yarns all of the things um and just a super simple simple raglan for that and i love it it's just it's so sweet it's a sweet little pattern um I'm, I've made multiple, that's my third would be baby sweater. I don't know that I'd recommend that pattern for adults because there is no back shaping and I think raglans can benefit from that. But um, if you're a new knitter or you want one like, that, I mean, that's such a cool technique. So it was, it was worth it for me to get it for that. Um, okay, here's my next one. This is a test knit that is for Tor U from Tori Knits NYC. I um, started this August 16th and I finished it September 24th. It took me 39 days, mostly because I hated the yarn. I love, love the pattern. It's my first saddle shoulder construction. These beautiful um, ribbed three, three to four rib lines, whatever it is that go down, go all the way down the sleeve, which I know is pretty common. I never did that before. I thought it was really fun. Um, I made it this out of a hobby yarn called Zephira. It's discontinued now. It's a blown tube construction chainette yarn. I hate it. It's like got cotton. It's really crunchy. I'm not the only one. Like my knit friends have, they were like, are you serious from the podcast? Like, let me feel this yarn. They were all like, oh, ew. It was, it was not pleasant to knit with. It's okay to wear. It's a little crunchy on too, but I wear it a lot. This is probably my most worn, um, made this year sweater. I, I throw it on all the time because I feel like I can wear it with everything like with leggings with jeans with whatever um and it's just super easy it's boxy it's got a nice boxy fit um it's it's a size I didn't have not been telling you the size maybe I'll pop that up in notes maybe I won't I'm unreliable but um editor Megan is unreliable because it depends on how tired I am <laughs> but um this is like a size five I think and I yeah I just really I really love the construction of it I like the actual fit of the garment don't love the yarn would I make it again? Absolutely. Like, and the pattern is originally with a mohair and a fingering held together. And that drape is really beautiful. And I would do it. I would do that too. Um, or with a Surrey. Okay. Let's close out September. So I have, um, three things to show you. Um, three, four, th three or four. Um, I think three because I think one of them is a sock. Uh, so I have two of these. I'm just going to show them to you together, even though I made them, you know, a couple days apart. So these are Manhattan hats. These are for baby and me. Um, I'll show you the fit of this. I'm obsessed with this hat. I'm going to make, I've already made another one of them. them and um, yeah, for our baby sizes to adults, the pattern, I'm going to make more. I want to make them for everybody. I want to make more for me and all the colors. I just, I love it. This is Back Loop Yard Co. Worsted. Um, base like basic worsted and um it's a super wash merino 100 in the color poison so enough for baby after i finish mine and so yeah super fun um it's a tori knits pattern uh it is just you know a super uh basic ribbed hat that has that cute little decrease detail what i will say is she I think the original, she didn't have this, but she had inst added instructions to do the decreases inside out and then you flip your hat. Um, I actually didn't flip it to do it inside out and flip it back. I just did those decreases inside out because my ribbing looks identical front and back. Um, I don't have any differences in ribbing shape because I do that combo ribbing. So cute, cute, cute hat. It's really cute on her. She hates hats, but I'm going to make her more of these as she gets uh, older because it's just so cute. Um, I bought this pattern in the other weights too, and I've not made it in any other weight, but I am going to make it like in the, in the bulky in the, um, the sport weight, which is a good hand spun hat pattern. Um, that, uh, the one for me, I made, uh, September 25th to the 27th. So it took me two days the one for baby, I started twenty the 27th and finished the 28th. So it took me one day. Um, I'm super in love with it. It's not the exact same color as my pre-night um, Tulsa, but it's pretty similar. Uh, and let's see. And that's September. The The next, next knit is actually... <laughs> The one I'm wearing right now. So this is the Friendship Pullover by Amy Schur. I love this pattern. This pattern came out for like on Flock Weekend. I loved it then. I saw you know all her hype before, um, and I saw some examples there. And 
um, Amy from Lobby and Amy was wearing hers at Flock. And it's just like, it's so, I think they actually they both were, but I didn't see Amy sure. Um, I came like late on Saturday, so I missed her, but I finished this um, I did this as a knit along with Ariel. So I started this September 16th and I finished it October 8th. I wanted it done and washed and blocked in time for our knit week in a way so we could take pictures. And so I did like a little hosted thing through the YouTube podcast. There weren't that many people that did it with us, a couple people, but Sylvan, our friend Sylvan, who also went to knit weekend with us, did it. So there's pictures of the three of us. I'll throw one up here. Um, wearing this and it's just, it's such a great, uh, it's, it's semi cropped length. So on me, it hits like right below my natural waist, like right kind of at it. Um, it is bottom up. It's a compound raglan. I made this in Back Loop Yarn Co. Basic Worsted again. I'm in the colorway Tia Beanies 2.0. It's a darker version of Tia Beanies. And I'm obsessed with this color. I love it. It's so amazing. Um, even though it's really dark, I think it like live, you can really see this really fun travel-y cable. Um, it's my first compound raglan. It was my first bottom up raglan. And so I learned all the things in this pattern. And both of those things were pretty interesting and actually super easy. Um, really easy to do, really easy to complete. And I totally recommend this pattern. I really enjoyed making it. Um, and I obviously love this yarn. <laughs> obviously. Um, the next thing is something I don't have. It's a gift sweater, gifted sweater. I know guys, isn't that crazy? Um, but I made this gifted sweater for my best friend. It was done a little bit after her birthday. I finished it. I started it August 22nd and I finished it October 9th. Um, so it took me 48 days and I am obsessed. I love this pattern. This is a pattern I absolutely want to make again. I would like to make one for me. I think I want to do it in like a dark color for me. Um, so we could take a matching picture sometime, even though she's not a knitter. I feel like it would be so fun. Um, but the, the lace motif was really like easy to do. Um, it was easy to understand what was coming next, even though like, you don't necessarily have to memorize it because it does grow, you know, it's not, this is not like, repeating necessarily. Um, but the idea is repeating. It's got this simple spine down them. Anyway, it was really nice. It was my first, um, lace yoke of that style like just lace yoke and I really liked it I thought that was I get why people do it I get why people still publish more in different patterns like that um sorry Nordland has a bunch of those patterns one of them is going to be something that I'm going to pick over this one just because I really love that one I love both of them but I'm I really am obsessed with that sorry Nordland one um which is the wood anem anemone um yeah so this is made out of woolberry um natural fingering and uh very surrey the old formula so it's a little bit dense the fabric is really nice it's super soft the color is uh smelled i smelled snow um it's a great color for sarah it's not a great color for me she did tell me the other week she's been wearing it she wore it twice last week and she's like i love it it's so cozy so i feel very happy that she's wearing it um and yeah, I, I really loved working with the Berry Natural, actually. I would totally do it again. And yeah, I had a great time using it. So I, um, yeah, I loved, I love that pattern. It's one of my favorite, I think it's my favorite make from last year. Like just super enjoyable. Um, my next thing is another sample knit, which I'll pop up here. This is a sec, my second sample this year for La Mercerie. Um, this is made out of Cory Worsted from La Bien Amy. I know she put like a disclaimer on her Instagram not the other, the other day and I don't know if I said something weird about this too but Cory Worsted is not a worsted weight yarn it's a DK weight yarn but it's a worsted style um spin now I know what that means and also I feel like that would be very confusing for people who don't spin <laughs> but that's what it's called um but this is Cory Confetti so actually this doesn't even be called Cory, Cory Worsted but it's this is the same as the Cory Worsted but it's Confetti um it's the gray bow color it's something they had a partial skein of, and so they wanted a sample of it, and it is the Manhattan hat, and of course, we just talked about the Manhattan hat. I love it. It was great. Um, I would make it again in another confetti yarn because it was really, really fun. It had that, like, really fun pop. Um, that one, I knit the adult, like, large size, I think, and it was just a single fold brim also, and it was October 10th to October 7th. It took me seven days, not because I actually took me seven days, but I was working on this thing to get it done. So this is the Oolong Tank by Amy Schur um, over here. Um, it is a sample I made for her Paisley Newburn at Horizon Fiber Co. It's made out of her Stratus Fingering, which is a linen bl blend. And I think it's like 25% linen. 
Um, it is 50% alpaca, 25% linen, 25% silk. And it's like a gorgeous, it's very linen-y. It's got lots of pokies. Um, but it's actually really soft and it was really nice to work with. Um, it doesn't have quite as much stretch as like a, just like a merino or an alpaca yarn you would think it has. Um, I, the drape is incredible. It is what I'm going to get from my money that I got, um, from Paisley for the test knit absolute or for the sample I'm absolutely going to buy some of that yarn for one of my make 12 this year which is um the salty air tea because I think it looks really amazing in a linen blend so that's what I'm gonna do love the yarn recommend love this pattern it was a bottom up constructed tank top with these lace panels that split I've never done something like that before and it was really really cool it's very engaging it's not a pattern I I would recommend people to make this pattern if you think that would fit in your wardrobe or you know how to wear that. I'm still not sold on it for me because like you have to wear something underneath of it because like I'm not going to walk around with just my bra showing. I don't wear a lot of bralettes and also like I just don't want my tummy to be out there. It's me personal preference. Um, I don't think that's ever size related or anything. I think that's totally a personal preference thing. So... But Amy sure wears hers over tank tops, like kind of as like a vesty thing. And I'm like, oh, maybe I want to do that. But then if I did that, I think I would make uh, make it in a merino. So um, it's something to think about. I have that pattern and I can do it again in my future. Um, and I started that on September 7th and I finished on October 18th. And so it took me 41 days. I think you could bust that out a lot faster. I was just doing lots of other things. Okay, we're into... November. So the next thing here is my Ashling. This Ashling is a test knit for Maddie Mo. It's still not out. It will be coming out soon. Maddie just got distracted with holidays and also she had a lot of stuff going on. You can see something in here. I'll talk about it in a second. Um, this is a single strand of Surrey sweater. It's incredible. I mean, it weighs nothing. Like this weighs, at it's a cloud. It's, it weighs nothing. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. This color is um, Backloop Yarn Co. Custom color for me called Periwinkle. Um, it is a bottom up, what do I have to say about sort of drop shoulder? Like it's a half drop shoulder, half inset sleeve. Like it sits for me. Um, where's the shoulder? The join is here. It sits like just off my shoulder, like just past. On her, she's a smaller size. It sits like a little bit more in a drop shoulder expected space. But um, even Ariel, she test knitted this too in my knitting group, um, Ari Knits on pot, um, on YouTube if you want to check her out. Um, she also knitted this and it doesn't really look super drop shoulder on her either. It is, um, yeah, it's a dream. It has this really cute little side detail of, it's hard to see on camera. Um, it's ribbed here. I feel like you can see it on Ariel's more too, maybe because she used like a ver more variegated yarn. But it's a little ribbing detail. Um it's super like it feels light it feels amazing it's fun to wear I have worn it multiple places like anything sorry it's gonna shed everywhere but I really like I just love it I actually wore it yesterday <laughs> um okay so let's talk about this um my one thing that I would tweak if I did it again is I would probably pick up um the collar a little differently I would do slightly less stitches um but I had a hard time um, with the collar because like at first it was too tight. I couldn't get it over my head. Um, it was, it was the whole thing. Um, and that was like doing a kind of a knit together, um, cast off. I instead cast it all, I ripped that all out, cast it off, um, and then sewed it down. And that is much better, but it was a little bit floppy. Um, it like stuck out, you know, like this. Um, I put in, I sewed in this elastic. I enjoyed the knit and I, um, I will say like one strand of Surrey was a little bit taxing to do. Um, I enjoy knitting with Surrey held with something, uh, but I love the end product like so much. So like, I really would contemplate making it again. I, it felt a little bit of a slog. The body was a long, it was long. I mean, a single strand of Surrey is a lace weight. It's lace. Um, and it's not a super tight knit, but also it's not a very loose knit. Oh, um, what I will say my, my favorite thing and like the cool, unique thing, and I want to do this for other sweaters is that if you ever do, um, or want to do a, um, split hem, this is the way to do it. And I think you could mod patterns to do this because really all you do is you add some extra stitches on whatever end you'll join second and you just overlap them. And it really does elevate the look. Like it's, this is the back. The back is a little bit longer, but even if you did a traditional split hem with not longer, like it 
having that little cut instead of that like sort of like long stretch stitch that happens between the two sides like it's really cute it makes it a little bit more elegant I loved that loved that detail um and that pattern will come out soon oh and I didn't say so I started that September 4th and I finished it November 9th and so that took me 63 days but I had a really long test time and still not over so um I kind of kind of been working on that forever but I'm glad I got it out of the way and I'm glad I've worn it um a few times so the next one is the Phaedra, which is um, a sample knit that I made for Erin from Backloop Yarn Co. It was so nice to use some more of her yarn. Um, always. I made that in her basic um, sock and Surrey and the color ghouls, which was from her like fall collection. Uh, it's called the Burr Collection for the Burr Months. And I um, made it, it is by Audrey Borrego, the pattern. Um, she's yarn flakes. Anyway, um, I started it September 19th. I finished it November 9th. So it took me 51 days. I could have also finished this faster. Um, th the cable panel was a little arduous. It's really long. Um, it's, it's really like, uh, one section, the other, and then you just repeat a again over on the other side. But I thought it was really interesting. The cables were interesting. They have like little leaf motifs. You've got um, bobbles, which I don't love, but I liked this style of bobble. It's much more like crochet. Like you kind of just like yarn over, yarn over, yarn over, and then you pull through. Um, it's different. It doesn't make as much of an apparent bobble, right? Um, but it also can like fall backwards more easily. I did not, this picture is not blocked because Erin wanted to block it with, with a special wash. And so I would, I should have bugged her for a picture, but I'm sure it looks really gorgeous blocked. It's still just like a little bit, you know, those edges don't look as nice until it's blocked. Um, but I liked the pattern. It was bottom up. Again, it had a split hem. Um, it had the, the high low hem. There were a lot of fun and interesting things. It was there wasn't anything I think really unique other than those bobbles were different. I hadn't done bobbles like those. Um, but I, I, I enjoyed the pattern. I think if you really like that look, if you like, you know, that this is big cable section, but if you like that kind of like little cable fun repeats, but very interesting looking, like that's a great pattern to use. Um, oh, and it had a dot motif. Actually, that's something I'd never done before. I don't know that it added so much to it, but it had a dot motif all over. So like every sixth or seventh row I added a purl stitch every so many stitches I don't know how many um and it just kind of makes a little yeah it makes it a little bit of visual interest that would be an interesting thing to add to just like a plain stockinette sweater it doesn't, doesn't change your gauge at all hmm food for thought you just do some math like you could totally do it my next finished project is a um this is a test knit for uh Rebecca Clo at the Crayabea. This is my first test knit for Rebecca. I really enjoyed it. Um, she was doing a lot of tests at the time, so it was just on Instagram. I don't, and Google Docs. I don't like, I didn't interact with her very much, but I really enjoy her. She's like one of my knit inspiration people. I know she hasn't been designing super long, but I like just really like everything that she, like everything she makes. I'm like, yep, love that. Love that too. Love all of those things. Um, the color she picks for her samples too. Like it's just gorgeous. So this one is actually featured on her pa her pattern page on Ravelry, which is so exciting um, because I did this really fun fade. And this is a uh, Treehouse Knits um, Winter Solstice 2022 colors that I got off of a the Destash Discord. And um, it's seven colors. I did a non-equal fade. So I did like a lot more repeats in this color and almost no repeats plus the ribbing in the last color because they're all 50 gram skeins. And you know how shawls go. As they grow, you can do less rows with the same amount of yarn. So I did actually track every single row I did. And I think I put this in my project page in Ravelry so you can see how many grams, partly because part of this pattern came out as a like the part of the reason this pattern came out was for an advent. So you could see how much yarn was used each repeat. Um, and yeah, this is her Sequoia sock um, from Treehouse. Lauren does an amazing job. I mean, it's absolutely like the most gorgeous fade. It's super beautiful. I still don't like love this color. This is the only one that actually, I mean, this one, this like yellowy, like, I don't know. It's great though. I mean, overall it looks amazing. This I gifted to my mother. She wears it all the time which is nice. I started that October 24th and I finished it November 14th. And so it took me 21 days. Um, I like 
that's pretty fast for a shawl, I think, because there's a lot of stitches at the end. I did more repeats than like just the 24 two stripes that she had suggested. Um, not that many more, but I just, you know, that's a lot of stitches to add. Okay, um, the thing I finished the next day was my superlative. I was just like on a kick to finish this. We cast this on as a knit group, so this um we cast on a boucle knit all together on October 1st. So I cast this on October 1st. I finished it November 15th. This is the superlative. It's patterned by Samantha Guerin. This is my first Samantha Guerin pattern. Um, I am a big fan of the finished product. I understand why she didn't do short rows, though I think that would improve the fit of it overall. It's a very sweatshirt feel. I do throw this on quite often, actually, like just around the house and just like because I want to wear my knits and it's cozy. It's boucle um, yarn by Explore Knits and Fibers in the colorway to the stars who listen. I would recommend if you want to knit with boucle, Ali does great colors. It doesn't matter the kind of yarn. It, it, she she makes great colors. So yeah, go ahead. Make it out of that yarn. If you aren't sure if you like boucle, I say try it. You never know what's going to be your bag. Um, some of the girls in our knit group hate it. Some of them love it. So like it's really dependent. Um, I love the end product enough that I'd probably knit with boucle again. I know I'm going to knit with boucle again because I already showed this yarn, but I'm going to make something out of this one collection yarn. So and that is boucle. Will I buy a lot more boucle? Sort of, maybe. Like there, are, I don't know. Maybe it's just having a moment this year and it's not going to be like as much of a thing. It's interesting. You just, it makes you slow down a little bit. It's not a bad thing, honestly, but it does not feel quite as comfortable in my hands. So that's the other thing to note. Okay. Um, so I finished that November 15th, which means it took me 45 days. Um, I made like a size six, I think I made one bigger than I would normally make. Cause I want to use like the maximum amount of yarn. I still didn't use that much yarn. You guys, that's the other thing about boucle is like a little goes a long way. Now we're in December. So, um, I, the next thing is socks, but I can't show you those. Cause those are a year of socks. That's my November. Um, I finished my Kettle chip socks. This is a test knit, another test knit for Maddie Mo from um, Momoro One on Instagram. Anyway, um, it is a sock tube afterthought heel self striping yarn free pattern that is going to come out like any day now. Um, it is good. I maybe made the heel too close to the front. They fit mostly fine, but I don't like the afterthought heel. I think it's like, it's too like pointy. It's weird. Um, a couple people gave me different formulas for them that I may try out. Um, I got more self-striping yarn. I loved knitting with self-striping yarn. I will absolutely be making another self-striping yarn pattern because I don't love the heel on this. I don't know that I'll use this pattern again, but it's a free pattern. So like, do you, someone also had a really good suggestion for making sure they're in the right spot as you knit as much leg as you want. And then when you get to where you think you want the heel, you knit a, like a little bit further, put your heel in and then continue knitting to your toe, which is like a good idea. Although knitting the sock tube was so mindless and fun that I could have just like knit tons of them. I loved it. I just loved seeing the colors come up. Um, so I don't think I'll redo anything about the heels. So it just is what it is for these. Um, they fit. They're just not super comfortable. Next thing I finished was, oh, and sorry, those took me, I did a size three or size four and it took me from November 9th to December 6th so 27 days but mostly because like for two whole weeks I think the heel was just not being knit um and the heel took me like one day to do both of them and so I should have just done it but you know you live you learn um turtle dove shawl this was we had just talked about this this is a um the mystery knit along this year from Starly, sorry Nordland I will do sorry's mystery knit alongs forever because I had a great time with this um I made it out of DK yarn. This is, if it looks familiar, the same yarn that I use for my Wild Ivy. So it's a cashmere DK from Backloop Yarn Co. Obviously, I'll use that yarn again. It is very cute. I don't know how I wear it. I feel very French if I throw it on like this. It's like a kerchief, but it is very nice. It feels very soft. Um, I had fun with the pattern reveals. I know some people in my knit group wish it had like changed more during it. So it wasn't like just once you kind of get to the second part, you know what the three and four are going to look like, but I liked it. I was satisfied with that as a, as a mystery knit along. Um, I started that November 29th, like right after it, the pattern came out and I finished it right at the day, the fourth clue came out. So that was December 20th. So it took me 21 days. I, um, and that was a friend knit along too, mystery knit along and friend knit along. Um, the last three things this year, 
Um, here is my, one of my most favorite things I made this year. Um, and this is my Dopio sweater. This is a pattern by Sunghee um, Hong, Sunghee Knits. And this is a fingering, fingering plus fluff held together. Um, you can do lots of different combos too, but basically you're getting a bulky weight knit. So bulky weight gauge, um, whatever yarns get you there. Um, it, I made it with like, I think six millimeter needle. So like it went by really fast. It took me from November 30th to December 21st. So almost the same amount of days it took me 21 days to make this. And I, I loved it. I had a, an amazing time. I love everything about it. It's got a faux seam on the side. I, um, that is the, that's the unique thing I think about this construction. Two things that are unique is it's got a faux seam on the side. So you can add a purl stitch just like right in the middle and then you mattress stitch in a special way up it and it sucks it in. So you can't see that it's there really, but it, um, adds reinforcement and strength to your especially something that's like really drapey and bulky like this um and then look at this raglan so um you can see like I'll put a picture I took pictures today you can see it but like it's got this like kind of fun line that it does on the raglan because it's a compound raglan so it's my first ever top down compound compound raglan well that's not true because a staple tee is technically a compound raglan I guess I didn't know that at the time so yeah whatever um this one isn't intentional. It's super, super great. It's really pretty. It's, it fits really beautifully. Um, I guess, you know what? The stable tee, I take it back, is not, not necessarily a compound raglan, but you can have different increases depending on your size and the measurements you put in, um, which is cool. I'm going to do the next two really fast, and then I'm going to come back for a closeout later because I need to have dinner. Um, this is my duotone. I'm done with it. So um, regular podcast listeners, you guys haven't seen this yet, but I'm adding it in because it finished this year. I'm going to talk about this in more detail on Friday's podcast episode uh, when I film Friday, but um, this is my duotone. This is my last test knit of the year. Um, this test knit is for Rachel Costello Knitwear made out of ZZ textile yarns. I did purchase yarn for this one because uh, Rachel from ZZ Textiles was, um, spot, like the, the dyer, featured dyer, whatever. And she had a discount and I just, I really love her yarn. I really love her sweater quantity library, um, that you can order yarn from. And so I just had fun looking for things. I was sort of really stressed looking for things because there were so many combos I wanted, but I landed on ink, which is the blue leather, which is the green. It looks gorgeous. It looks really cute. Okay. I think my camera angle may have changed a little bit, but I said I was going to zoom through them and then have dinner, but then my phone died. So, you know, um, I had dinner and now I'm back. Uh, I was in the middle of talking about how gorgeous this sweater is. Um, I like the fit. I took pictures today, so I will put some, one of those up as well. Um, it's boxy, but not, it doesn't feel like super big or anything like that. Um, the, um, edging is nice. Okay. So what I, what I learned about this, A, I thought this was a really really fun and engaging pattern because even though it's just like stocking it mostly with these eye cords in the middle, um, I guess engaging in parts, it is a stockinette sweater. So as much as that can be, but there was a lot of learning in this. So, uh, instead of just knitting it bottom up, um, you actually start with a provisional cast on so that you can make it as long as you need to that's a great tip. Um, and then also because the edging that she suggests is either I-cord or um, a faux ribbing, you can't like start with either of those. So, which is, which is great. Like you could, if you were all the way at length, like you could totally do it and then just come back and be like, oh, I'm just going to put the ribbing on. Like once I pick up for the provisional, that's great. Um, I don't mind provisional cast on. So it wasn't like a big deal to me. I, I really enjoyed that. Um, I knit like 80% or 85% before I split for sleeves. Um, and there are people that did just a little bit and then split for sleeves. Uh, I also really liked the three needle bind off in an I cord. That was really fun. Um, you, I learned this like special crochet thing too, that you can do to tighten up an I cord. So that was a new thing. Um, and I had never done faux rubbing before, which is essentially I cord ribbing. <laughs> like you, just are doing like many, many I cords 
uh, this, this, that's the idea. Um, it spreads out really different when you have a bunch of them, right? Rather than this tight little thing, even though this is the same number of stitches. Um, she did a good thing. Every one of them in the pattern lines up with a little, um, like right in the middle of a three. Um, I thought that was really cute. Uh, same with the sleeves. Um, which I did say when I blocked this, I wanted them to be a little less like, um, floppy. I, th I think that's like the right, <laughs> the right word we're going to use for it. And I think that the blocking helps. They, they look a lot more even. It looks really great on like, and it's super cozy, super comfy. Um, I wasn't sure how I'd feel about the colors, but once I put it on, I was like, I'm cute. I like it. So I'm into it. I'll give it a lot of wear. Um, would I do it again? So the, this, the duo tone being like the two colors, for sure. I thought that was really fun. The book seat was already like that, though I did a black and the green. So it was like a subtlier kind of idea. I like a marled sweater. I think it's really like interesting and creates like a unique color fabric. Um, you can see, well, I won't put a picture here because I don't feel like doing all of that for the patterns, but um you can, if you go to Rachel Costello's, she's got like three or four samples she's done for herself now and like different finishes because you can just do eye cords. All of this to say, she's mostly done hers with mohair and I think that does create a very different looking fabric. Like it's still very duotony, but you can see more of the background color, um, which is like the, the ink for me. Um, I would maybe do that. I think that would be really fun, especially like it didn't take a ton of yarn. So like if I had, you know, three skeins of a Surrey instead of or, or whatever I would normally need for a sweater. Maybe. I don't know. Um, I mean, I have no, nothing against it. I would, I like, I run it, just use some of these tips though in other patterns. I think for other bottom up, like you can totally do a provisional cast on most of the pattern and then go the other way. Unless there's cables or other things that are going to get messed up if you do that. But like, that's pretty cool. Cool tip. Um, Okay, the last, oh, um, I don't think I did all the, t the dates for that. So that's a size five. Uh, I knit that, um, I started on November 11th and I finished as December 31st, like middle of the day, actually. I did soak on the 31st, so it technically wasn't blocked until the first, which for me is done, but you know what? We're going to call it done. Um, I did take, I didn't take pictures until today, but the test knit is, was due Yesterday, my feedback form was in. I just didn't have like publishable photos, but she's get just she just needed the feedback form. Um, and now I did take photos. I posted them. I'm like for in in the Slack channel, she can publish them. It's it's really fun. She does like an extra shout out to her testers, and it's sort of like we did all this work. It's so nice to be like memorialized in the pattern. So when other people buy it, they don't just have to go through Ravelry and see who tested it. They like our names are there and our handles maybe maybe just our first and last names. But that's so fun. Um, I want to be in a book. I want to like test knit for someone who's, who's in a book. That's like, what a great way to like have your name in knit history. <laughs> Maybe Sarah Nordland's next book. I'm going to like bug her to try to be in it. Okay. Um, wow. Actually that's my last one. And then we're, let's do socks now. Let's do socks. Okay. Okay, I am going to do my year of socks now. Um, I have adjusted the camera again, so sorry if things keep changing. Um, but I had to run upstairs because I totally forgot about getting my calendar so I can show you some of this. I'm going to show you, maybe I'll throw in a picture of like what the yarn looked like. I don't know. Probably not. Let's just go with, let me show you the picture of the calendar item. So, and then I'll tell you the, the sock. I don't remember the color for everything if I remember, because it's like mostly names of one of these things, I'll tell you. <laughs> Otherwise, just use your imagination. So <clears throat> let's start with January. I will say, I think I mentioned this already, but one sock does not live in my house. So that is the only one that's going to come with just the picture. Uh, but um, instead of having to throw up pictures of these modeled well, I'm going to do it for everything else. So I might do it here too. So you can see what it looks like on my foot, but an easier way to show this, I think is to throw one of these on the sock blocker, um, and then show you like through my hand, like I've been doing, because I think the pattern sometimes like it only shows up across the top of your foot, right? So let's start at the beginning. We have January and January is, um, what order? I'm going to do this. So January is this picture and it is called chicory and the honeybee. It's this beautiful, like periwinkle color. Um, and here is what the yarn looked like, the sock. It's a lighter blue color maybe than you'd expect, but it's 
really pretty and it's got little bits of um pinky and pink color in it which is why I actually paired it with um this pink you know I am gonna put up the pictures editor Megan's gonna do this of the yarn with the mini because I didn't use any of the minis and so you can just see what that is they will be used for something later but yes so this is that I made now what did I make with it um I made the hearth socks pattern, which was a test knit um, for Carly Parents, who is Northwoods Knit Co. Um, I love, I already said this with the Sunday morning socks, but I love Carly Parent socks. I think they fit great. I like her patterns. I like that they come in collections. This was the winter collection from 2023. Um, it was published, you know, sometime in like, well, I, I put the uh, posted date as February 3rd. So it's probably published on February 3rd. Um, this one is called Hearth uh, in that oh, winter Woodland Winter Sock Collection. That's what it is. Um, this was Hearth Socks. Uh, it was, um, I knit them from January 20th to January 27th. I finished both pair, both socks in that time. Um, I was like the only thing I was knitting on. I just remember that that week. I was like all that I knit. Um, and it has this like kind of fun pearl stitch across and it's got these like little baby cables. They are cute. They fit super well. I don't know what size I made, but I'm going to err on like two or three. That's usually what I test for her. Um, and it, it really depends on my mood if I pick two or three. So I don't actually remember. Um, these look like a three, just like they're pretty loose on the sock blocker. So that's probably what it is. But here it is. Pretty cute, huh? Okay. Let's move right along. Um, and what I'm gonna do at the end is I'll show you this cute little pile of all my socks. Um, so I'm gonna keep them in order. Um, so also you were gonna note that there's a lot of socks I didn't finish in the month, but I have until the 7th to post them um, inside of the Farmer Starter Fiber Sock Squad thing. Um, I did finish all 12 between January 1st and December 31st of this of 2023, this year we're in a new year. Um, yeah, so I, uh, yeah, that was pretty fun. Okay. This one is this beautiful pink picture and this is called Bitterroot and the Bumblebee. That's February. February pink is a very appropriate color. Um, this is the sock. I will say it's not quite as pink as I thought it would be. Uh, maybe I should just like, well, I'll put up that picture of the, the sock yarn with it. So you can see like, it's not quite as pink as you might think. Um, but it's actually this like really pretty, um, several reds color. To me, it's like more of a brick red sort of look. Um, it's got like a lot of variegation. It's really, it's really nice. Um, this one has, uh, also I've combined with like sort of a, I don't know, that's like a really... It looks very brown on camera, but it reads a little bit more like brick, dark brick red in person. Uh, and that's what I combined with. This pattern is uh, called Expelliarmus. And it is a Harry Potter inspired pattern that I bought a couple of years ago from Twin Stitches Designs. Um, I think her name was like Julianne or something. And is this focusing? focus on that. Okay, there we go. And you can see it has like a little, you know, squiggly charm going off the side, sort of like when they cast a spell or whatever. Um, and it has that nice, uh, pearl ridge as the pattern throughout. Um, I guess I didn't really socks. It's kind of hard. Is there anything different? These ones? No, this is pretty standard. I did like this. That was kind of fun. There's a left, there's a right. Um, there's that. So that is Expelliarmus. Oh, they took me how long to make? February 24th to February 28th. And that's because I was getting really close to the deadline. I think I still had the intention to make them within the month at that time. And, you know, like I didn't keep, I didn't stick with that. But I'm um, so four days. Okay, already by March, I was doing something different. Um, no, I, d I did March in time too. So, so that's these. March was the California Poppy and the Minute pirate bug. I have no idea what that means. And it just looks like kind of a little beetle-y thing. So that's what it looks like. The picture, the bug is like way up here. That's kind of small. It's a pollinator. Um, this color, like super close, like exactly what I would expect. Um, so I guess this is California poppy, right? Um, it's, it's a really pretty like orangey yellow color. Um, 
and the pattern has this little like lace thing on both sides and um so they're the same sock and it's uh, called lumos charm also a pattern within like the same set that i bought from twin stitches designs this one equally just a regular sock pattern nothing super special about it uh i made this one a bit longer and it does feel like a little floppier on my foot because i thought that the lace would make it a little bit tighter but i think i don't know you know who knows what's going on with sock gauge it was a little bit more open than i thought it would be um that one i made from march 1st to april 20th so it took me 19 days to make this pair um but they, I don't like, I don't gravitate towards wearing this as much. And I don't know why, because I have lots of yellow socks. It's not like I really care. Um, maybe because they, they do feel like a tiny bit floppier. Um, and I think that's just because I, I like was trying to get this last little, um, they are cuffed down. I was trying to get this last little like charm guy in. I probably should have just stopped earlier and just made the toe a little bit longer. It's fine. Um, we actually talked about the other part of this one um this is a test knit oh well let me talk about the color first here is our i just i remember april i don't know why something about this color that i thought was like very memorable it's called dandelion um and the hoverfly it looks like a bee so some some non-bee pollinator that looks like a bee <laughs> um it's cute you know, dandelions are dandelions. It's like my dog's favorite food. Um, she'll chomp them on a walk. We don't let her eat too many because they are something that pollinators need. And, but like, she's a dog. <laughs> she's real fast sometimes. Um, okay, here is uh, the colorway. Um, it's a dandelion color. I think this is actually pretty accurate. Like the way that this pulls in these like bluey grays really does remind me of like the tops of dandelions once they start to go, um, you know, and sort of like the seeds, but you know, like the bud at the top sometimes is like a gray color. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I like this color. It, these are a test knit. So this was the second test that I did for Megan Gonzalez. So I think I said like, Helms Deep was, they were secret tests because they were for, um, to be launched with Brandy's One Collection. And so that you could sign up for like texture lace or cables. And I signed up for cables and texture. And I did both because it was a really long timeline, even though I got them both done pretty quickly. So I started this April 7th. I finished it April 17th. Um, so at 10 days took me to make them. And this one is the texture pattern. And so it has like just this little kind of like grid Oh, it's doing a weird focus thing. Come on, camera. Um, it's got this weird like waffly grid thing going on. It was pretty easy to memorize. Um, it was easy to do. It was easy to tell it where you were. And like the pattern is really squishy. Like it's very squishy on your foot. It feels nice. So I paired this with all of these minis are like just um like unknown things I've gotten from d stash discord like the d stash discord i bought like once or twice like a pack of people's like leftover sock yarns right so from but they none of them had labels so this one i have no idea i think this one might have been like a woolberry because it might have been actually like a mini from a set that i separated because i liked it with this better who knows moving on um also that one like you know lessons learned again socks they were just a really standard pair of socks um yeah, nothing super crazy. Uh, I do like the fit of those. And I think Megan Gonzalez writes pretty, you know, good sock pattern. She has lots of like other kinds of accessories and stuff. So, I mean, I'm a fan for sure. Um, my, so that was April. So we're in May. May colorway is uh, Queen Anne's Lace and the Carrot Wasp. Another, you know, a stinging creature. I actually don't know if these ones sting. Um, I don't love wasps. There it is on the top there. Queen Anne's Lace. So, like, what, col what color do you think this is going to look like? I shall show you. Um, a little bit pinky, a little bit, like, white. This one has a more purple than I kind of thought it would have in it, but I like it. These were one of my very... Here is what they look like. I will pull one on a sock blocker in a second. Um, these were one of my very favorite sock like outcomes this year. I don't know what it is about it. it the, this was a free pattern on Ravel, Ravelry called the Krufka sock. They give you both top or like cuff down and toe up 
options. Um, and it's super simple. It's just got like a little bit of striping and then it has this like eyelet, like in a brick, brick kind of pattern eyelet across the foot. It's a standard um, slip stitch heel. Like there's nothing that screams like, oh, this is a special sock, but I just like really enjoy them. I wear these out a lot, probably like, the most I wear out. Like I'll put them over like the ends of my leggings and wear sneakers because I wear all birds all the time, like everywhere all the time. Um, But like, I just think they're so cute. So um, my most worn socks, most likely. Um, I really love my Vervain socks, my most recent. So I don't know if these are my absolute favorite because I really like those, but um, they're so fun and I wear them a lot. So um, they've worn really well. Uh, let's see. And I didn't tell you guys like which sock yarns, but there's only three that were this year, the Pintler, the Highwood, and the... I always forget the BFL one, the Rocky Mountain Pearls. If you want to know more about them, watch one of my other episodes. I'm always talking about these socks and I can, I tell you all the breakdowns, um, but they're mostly, you know, there's two, two ply, one, four ply, you know, like, and it's just, just those three for the mix this year um, for socks. And I very much enjoyed all of them. Um, this one is Rocky Mountain Pearls, I believe. And, um, I really like a two-ply sock and I just feel like it, it holds up really well. So that's a super rush BFL mix. Anyway, um, this one I started May 16th, finished May 24th. And so that took me eight days. That one I finished in month. Look at me. Look at me go. Um, June, I did not finish in month, but uh, oh, this is the one I don't have. So um, the color is called uh, Sacred. Gosh, I don't know if that, I think that's Sacred de Tora. Um, and the elephant hawk moth. This is like really scripty font and I don't know what a detura is. So maybe I said that right. Who knows? Um, it is, looks like this. It kind of looks like a morning glory. Maybe that's like the real name for it. I don't know. Um, maybe it's different cause it has that weird, like, um, stamen thing coming out of it. Anyway, whatever. Uh, the hawk moth is really beautiful. It's like a very cool pink color. Um, but <laughs> the color of these socks, I'm going to pop up right here. Uh, the picture of the yarn and then the picture of the sock. So give it a couple of seconds, but it's like real, real green, <laughs> which actually like, if we go back here, this is like the highlighter green color in these hawk moths. I mean, they made it on purpose. It's just like, it's an acid green color. I don't hate that color. I actually would have kept these socks for myself, but, um, I had a little mishap making them. And that's fine. So I started these probably on like, like mid June, like early to mid June. And then I had to frog them because it was, a, it's a, the pattern is called Lord. Um, oh, I didn't say this, the, sorry, the Krufka socks is comfort, um, comfort zone knits. Uh, let me just check comfort zone knits. Yeah. Um, I'm sure I already put that text up, but I don't want to forget. So Toiva Harju is from the 52 Weeks of Socks. And I got that book like maybe in April. So yeah, maybe April. Um, it was the first sock I think I had made out of it. I think that's true. Uh, anyway, it was a cool, it's like, it's a traveling lace pattern that goes from the outside and, and goes into the inside of the foot. And I started them and I, they were too big. And so like I, I did like most of the cuff and I was like, oh, this is really baggy. And so I went down both a size and a needle size. Like, why did I do that? I have no idea, but I put them in timeout for a little. And then I was like, oh shoot, I've got to like get these started. I got partway through a sock and I realized, um, this is too small now. And I was like, I'm not gonna third times the charm this. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. Um, so one of my really good friends who I have actually never knit anything for, well, I've never knit anything like I've crocheted things for her before, but I was like, I am going to gift these to you. Do they fit your foot? She's got a smaller foot than me. They did. And so I made these for her. Her birthday is also in July and I finished them in July. So I gave them to her right after. Um, I started these over on June 26th and I gave them to her on July 7th. No, I finished on July 7th. So it was like the last day before posting. Um, so that took me 11 days. They are pretty intricate, that lace pattern, but they were pretty fun to make. Um, 
that was the first time I did that. I mean, lessons learned is like pay attention to your gauge when you do a big glaze panel like that. Like it's going to change, it's going to change things. Um, that's all I have to say about those. Okay. Right into July. So this is the July flower. It is called Lupine and the Carner Blue Fly. Don't know what that is, but it looks like a butterfly. Focus for a sec. Um, it does say blue fly, you guys. I'm not like, not reading that right. Whatever. I'm like, it's a mothy butterfly thing. Anyway, really pretty as you may expect. The color for this was very close to lupine for sure. Um, this is the Dear Bjorn pattern. This is another I like tried right away. I was like, I'm going to try 52 weeks of socks again. This is like the, the last pattern in the first book. Um, this is by, oh, sorry, Toy Baharju was by Heidi Alander. Um, so Dear Bjorn, I also finished the very last day. Um, and this was by Fiber Creative. Um, I started July 17th and I finished August 7th and that was flock weekend. And so let me tell you something about these. And I, really, honestly, it could be that, um, because the socks are not the same. So they are opposite. I don't know if it matters which one is, which one is which. Um, but if you like look at them, one goes one way and one goes the other right? This looks like an optical illusion, but actually my other sock, my second sock is significantly smaller. <laughs> um, I started the second one while I was in line for flock. And I swear to you, I was just so excited that I was strangle holding the yarn. It could also be that my right twists are tighter than my left or whichever, whichever way it is. Um, I guess left tighter than right. I don't know. I don't know what it was, but like you guys, this, they're like, very much two different size socks. I can still fit into both of them. It's just like one feels real snug and the other feels like just right. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, but I do really like this pattern. I think I would like be willing to try it again. I would just pay a lot closer attention. I would make them with the Charlotte method at the same time. So I was like sure that they look the same. Cause like the, the left and this, the like traveling stitch like slip stitch does look different so like I think I could tell the difference possibly um you know they've been washed they still are different sizes so it is what it is um and I think that's all for that but I do I mean people really love this pattern so like I I can guarantee that other people are able to keep their gauge the same I just could not um let's go to August okay August I finished right the beginning of September also. So August 17th to September 5th. So that's 19 days. And let's see what the August color was. I have these all jumbled and in my mind, I don't know if I have them all in the right way. Okay. I know this one, this is yucca and the yucca moth. Um, I said before in my very first episode, I called it yucca and I realized yucca is a root, yucca is a flower and they are pronounced differently. Anyway, um, here is my yucca moth socks and these are my least favorite I really enjoy the sock but I don't like the color and so um I wear them actually because they're pretty comfy because I like the sock pattern I just like still have mixed feelings about this color so um this doesn't look far off I mean like I understand absolutely why it's this color like that looks very close to this yucca blossom but like it doesn't, it doesn't call to me as a color. Like I know maybe some neutral lovers really like it, but like something about those bright green dots, like just reminds me of like yellow snow. Like, I don't know. I don't love it. Anywho. Um, I used the pattern though, uh, harvest socks. And this was from the fall. Yeah. From the sweater weather sock collection from Car Carly Perrin. So this is one I had tested the year before in 2022 end of the year. It's like a fall collection. She had three patterns. I tested a different one and then I ended up making this one because I have those three and so mine as well, right? Um, the pattern is cute. It's just left and right twist. Oh, it stay focused. Um, you know, kind of ribbing, which is, which is fun and they're very comfy. So I wear them. Um, nothing great to report here other than I don't like yellow, yellow variegated pops of color or whatever. Um, not even variegated. It's like yellow speckles, like bright yellow speckles. Maybe just not my thing. Okay. Moving right along. Sorry, this section's already so long. I'm trying to edit down a little bit, but uh this is called Milkweed and the Monarch. And so um there is like the milkweed flower in its like various states. I think milkweed is the one that gets that like tufty, tufty thing on it. So I think maybe this is like the dead milkweed. Anyway, 
whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, this is the color. This is the, the sock. So this is September's color. And I actually finished this one in the end of September. Wait, true? Yeah. So I finished this one. I, I made it from September 7th. So I cast this on right the day after I finished um, the Yucko socks. And I cast this on. And this, it took me from September 7th to September 28th. So 21 days. I was working on other, other projects, right? Um, it's a big sweater is going in September. And this is the Basic Rib Sock by Kate Atherley. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. It's great, super... I wanted just something like close to a vanilla sock, but not totally vanilla. And this was great for that. Um, I don't love the heel. You can even see here, it's got kind of like a weird, like extra bunch as opposed to like all the others I put on sock blockers. It's just like, there was more of a cup right there that was created, like too many rows of that small amount of stitches. I don't know. It was fine. Um, I just like, don't know that I'd make that again. I just sub in or do regular, the heel flap apart. Um, but here they are. I wear these a lot though, cause they are comfy. Uh, I don't like notice that on my foot. I just like, I don't, I don't feel like it added anything. So I probably wouldn't do it again. Okie dokie. Moving right along to October. October's sock is, um, the only other one I, f I made for somebody else. This one I started and made for somebody else. And this one, um, I made for my mom. And so this one is, the saguaro cactus and the long nose bat and I love a saguaro cactus like very pretty um the long nose bat is also very cute and you can see the wing color that's our color folks and so I will show you on a sock blocker and then I'm going to show you a comparison because this is why I didn't do it uh, you know not that long before I had struggled with this sock and then this color came in and like no they are not the exact same color no you're right this is definitely purplier or whatever and has pink highlights. This has brown highlights and has a gray or blue. But I was so mad at these socks. I was like, don't want blue socks. Don't care. <laughs> um, even though I can wear them. It's not like I can't wear them. So I just, uh, I nixed them. And uh, I decided to just make them for my mom just from the get go. So this is the classic Miel. It is a pattern I tested like I, as my very first pair of socks ever um, for Fox Fig. I really um, enjoy the pattern. It's like, you can see it's kind of like a honeycomb structure. Um, Miel is like from honey or whatever the word means. Um, it's got a little like rib section down both sides. The heel is kind of interesting. It's a slip. I'm going to show you on the other one it's a slip stitch heel. So like you don't ever define another slip stitch pattern. You just continue it from the back of the leg, which was pretty, pretty cool. Um, my mom wears them. They're comfy on her. Her foot's a bit bigger than me. So you can see from the sock blocker, it's like, um, but totally fine sock. Again, that one, no big deal. They, my shorties that I have in the meal, I, I'd never done the classic. There are two like sort of views of the pattern. It's the same look across the top. It's just like the setup of the foot and the heel are a little bit different between the two. Um, and I, you can make these as long as you want. My mom didn't want them long. So I just made them kind of al almost shorties, um, but using the classic pattern. Also finish, so I finished those um, in the month of November. Her birthday is the very end of October, but we had also a baby birthday then. A lot of things going on. So I knit those from October 18th to November 6th, which should be 19 days. The um, November sock I finished in the month of November because I want it to be prepared for December, which then shipped late. And then that's also why I was kind of late on those, but I did finish them this year. Um, this flower here is called Purple Coneflower and the Checkered Beetle. Um, I got a color which looks you know very much more reminiscent of the um I don't know what this like the seed part of this picture right this yellowy color but it does have those pink colors from the cone flower in it and I actually kind of like this color it very rem much reminds me like I, I basically use like the minis also from leftovers from my doodle socks and it's like gives me that vibe it's like to me again I always think of it as like a really pleasant fall color like it's fall that's what it reminds me of um I said for, I said for the doodle socks I think it reminds me of like painted corn that's what I think of so anyway this one is called um the Hermione Everyday Socks. 
this is a free pattern on Ravelry. People, a lot of like many thousands of people have made this pattern. Um, it does only come in one size, but I adjusted for my number of stitches I wanted. Um, I did pop you guys. I did pop these into the dryer the last time I washed them so that they would shrink down a little bit because they were just a little bit like loosey goosey on me. I could have probably done like four less stitches, but um, I enjoy these. Again, this one I do know. This uh, scrap yarn is all is calm from Backloop Yarn Co. Um, but yeah, I actually really enjoyed these socks. Um, I wear these ones a lot too. They're very comfy. Uh, what shall I do? The very last one. Okay. So, oh, and I made those from November 21st to November 28th. So kind of over Thanksgiving break. And those were, um, so it took me seven days. And by the way, anyone who doesn't regularly watch the podcast and I, you keep hearing me say like, oh, I have to post these by a certain day. Farmer's Daughter Fibers, if you're in their sock squad, you can join the, um, Ravelry group. And if you post pictures, by the seventh of the following month, um, you can be entered to win a gift card. And I think it's like 75 bucks a month. And then if you do all 12 and you don't have to make socks, you can make anything you want. I just decided I was gonna make socks early in the year. But if you use all 12 colors as like main colors and projects, um, individual projects for the month, then you can be entered for the end of the year thing. And it's like a grand prize. I don't know. It's like several hundred dollars for a gift card to Farmer Starter Fibers. So um, it's a pretty cool thing. I thought that would be like a motivating way to keep me invested, not just joining a sock squad, like, because I don't, hadn't knit that many socks before. Right. So like as a new thing, I didn't want to like, I don't know, do a crazy thing anyway. So, uh, sorry, let me, I snuck, snuck peeked you the, the socks. I was so excited. I haven't talked about them yet. Okay. This is called the Cardinal flower and Anna's hummingbird. And that's what it looks like. Hummingbird is this really pretty bluey color. Um, and this is a really pretty, this is my favorite color of the year for sure. One of my favorite patterns, this is the Vervain by Seichiko um, Bergen, who is also the 52 Weeks of Socks book. Um, I just feel really satisfied. Like, I think they look really pretty. The right is just opposite, right? So it has, has the same pattern on it though. Um, if they're cuffed down, I finished them in time. I really enjoyed them and yeah, they, this is the first time I'm showing them. I'll talk about them a little more on Friday, but construction wise, nothing crazy. Um, they're comfy to wear and they're so cute. Okay. That's all for my year of socks. I mean, I did it. You guys, I just, uh, I set a goal. This is probably the only real goal I had from 2023. Um, I wanted to, I actually, I know this is crazy, but just like without any real numbers, wanted to add to my stash because I didn't have them that much um, hand dyed yarn when I started the year. I certainly did that, as you can tell. Um, and I wanted to accomplish my, I wanted to be able to enter every month. That was the goal. So it could have been done in any time, but I'm glad I got all of them done um, within 2023. So I am missing that uh, Toy Vaharju, but this is my big pile of socks, which it feels very satisfying. And that's all for the Sock Squad um, discussion. So that's all, everybody. Those socks cleared out for the year. That's 71 items we went through. Not all of them in my house. Um, I hope that you had a fun time. I um, did say I would give you like one or two more stats. So I would like to tell you my most knit designers this year. So I did, I went through and I I have charts because I have the names listed for every designer. So I have made, I made six wool and pine designs. That's Abby and Selena. I love, I really do. I love their patterns. Some of them were, re were remakes and some of them were test knits and some of them were just for me. So, uh, I made five tour you three of which were the Manhattan hat. <laughs> I'm obsessed. I'll make more of them. Um, and then I made four Rosie Posey Knit Co's and three of those were the samples I never got paid for. And one of them was something I gifted to somebody, I guess. Um, I made three uh, Carly Perrins and then everything else is twos and ones. Um, anyway, so that's a lot of designers. I mean, there were a lot of new designers to me this year. There were a lot of my first, sorry, Nordland pattern, my first one, well, working on my first Andrew Mowry pattern. Um, my first Sarah Opie, like there's just, and like some big designers, some, some that I just like 
I found for the first time this year. Um, as I got into more garment making, like your Instagram changes. <laughs> I know everybody has lots of feelings about the algorithms, but uh, my knit Instagram, when I go on that feed, I don't see anything but yarn. Um, but I definitely was really heavy accessories for a couple of years. And so I really only saw accessories. I didn't see as many garments. And once I started making garments and following those garment designers, like pff, blew up, it's so different now. Um, I have a little bit of everything in there, but um, it's, you know, it's a, it's a new exposure to all these, um, all of these great knitwear designers. So pff, I think I, I did a recap before um, last episode about what like were my favorite things and I, and I talked about that as we went through here so I mean I had a really great year of knits there are very few things I completed this year that I'm unhappy with um I'm not super thrilled about the bleeding on my alley sweater light you can tell that it's pink in person in the top half and whiter in the bottom but also like I still wear it what do I care <laughs> I still knit this sweater and it's gorgeous um I experimented with some new yarns. I went deep stash for some of these yarns. And so, um, that was kind of fun. I definitely also knit things like immediately after I got them, I cast them on and that's great too. Uh, I talked about my knit goals also in last week's episode. Um, and there's a make 12 on there. I think I would like to make some more garments, um, that are not test knits. I do want to test this year, but I'm going to, pare that down a little bit, um, and use stash for things I have planned for those projects. Um, I've also been spinning. I didn't show any spinning here. Um, if you want to see any of my yarns, I've only been doing it since I had the podcast since like October. I've made four yarns that all by myself and one in a class. Um, and I've been having a great time. I've not yet knit with them. And that is something that I would really like to do also next year. So I am so glad you joined me on this very crazy whirlwind. I know I went through them really fast. Uh, if you have any questions, which you may, like, what did you say about this? Or like, can you tell us more about this other thing? Like, I'd be happy to talk about any of these knits again. Many of them, most of the garments were talked about on the podcast because as you just heard, a lot of the beginning of my year was accessories and other things. Part of that is I was not in my knitting group until May. They've definitely encouraged me to ramp up the garment making. Second of all, I had a newborn baby in my house. <laughs> like I didn't knit, join knit group until she was six months old, a little bit older than that. And that's when I felt comfortable and also needed like to get out of the house. Um, but it's when I felt comfortable, like she had a routine, she was sleep trained. She was sleeping through the night. So we really had evening time again to do stuff before that. Like this girl was up just whenever no one slept, everybody was doing cluster feedings. It was the whole thing, right? So um, I didn't get as much knitting time as I wanted, even though I was on week on week off parental leave with my husband. So, you know, that's the thing. <laughs> Having a kid is a little bit interrupting to your craft, but I would never change it. I love her. She's the greatest. Um, and I say that after she was a total pill during dinner. <laughs> uh she's so funny she is just you know she's being an opinionated little baby right now so that's 71 knit items I don't know that I'm gonna break that record next year because I'll probably have a lot more garments um and I you know like I had a lot of samples this year so like lots of these projects weren't here um will I do as many samples next year like it was pretty fun I don't really think you ever get paid quite enough for samples so like I don't know that I would do it again, like do that many again. Um, but there's like some just like yarn dyers and others that like, I love to support them. And if I have time, I would still continue to do it. Um, but yeah, I mean, 16 pullovers. That's a lot. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll get that many done, but I, I have no, I have no goals. Um, I think I finished 24 garments. I think that's right. 24 garments is a lot. Um, it includes tanks and tees and that one cardigan I made, but like I definitely have a make 12 and I would love to get those done. Um, beyond that, I don't know <laughs> if I test, you know, there's things that are going to pop up, but I really want to like nail that 12. I feel like that would be so great. Um, because I have all the yarn for that, but I also never want to limit myself. If something else strikes my fancy for a yarn, 
I'm going to do that with freedom. Uh, because this is just craft time and it's the best time. I hope that some of these knits inspired you. I love to knit fluence people. If you want to make something, you want to know about my mods, you want any other things, you want to send me what yarn colors you want to make for something, like I will help you choose. I'm here for that. Um, thank you to everybody who stuck with me for this whole episode. And thanks to my regular listeners. I hope that some of you came, even though you've heard about a lot of these things, just to see what else I was up to this year. I'll probably do one next year. We'll see how it goes. Um, if you have any suggestions, things you wanted to see that I didn't show you, other things you wanted to know, like, let me know. I'm not going to go back and record, but I can certainly tell you some stuff uh, next year and I'll put it in a note in my fancy spreadsheet. So uh, check out uh, this week's weekend. It'll come out on Saturday, probably um, episode. I'm going to talk you through my yarn stash. We're going to do the flat lay on, on Saturday during the day, but I am going to make sure my inventory is up to date before then, including all that new yarn I got over the last two weeks. And I am going to get everything buttoned up in my spreadsheet so I can give you every number I have. Um, Nothing has changed this week. I did cast on something New Year's Day, but I weighed all that yarn first. So don't worry about it. It'll be accurate. Um, thanks everybody for joining and I will talk to you so soon. Have a good one. Bye.